Bandbacker, number 22, Will Broderick, is escorted by his mother, Laura Broderick, and his father, Pete Broderick. <laughs> Safety, number 25, Aiden Lafayette, is escorted by his mother, Juliet Mendoza, and his father, Michael Mendoza. Place kicker, number 31, Linus Flores, is escorted by his mother, Laika Flores. <laughs> Defensive back, number 32, Blake Killian, is escorted by his mom, Amy Killian, and his dad, Jeb Killian. Defensive end, number 33, Cortland Hanna, is escorted by his mom, Brittany Hanna, and his dad, John Hanna. <laughs> Running back, number 38, Aiden Villarreal, is escorted by his mother, Isabel Villarreal, and his father, Manuel Villarreal. Safety, number 42, Ethan Delgado, is escorted by his father, Robert Delgado, and his mother, Stella Delgado. Welcome to the broadcast. Right now, if you're tuned in, what you're watching is something that's phenomenal. It's an appreciation of sorts. Tonight is Alamo Heights football senior night. As you see here on the screen... The football players are being escorted by their parents, so it's in some ways parent and senior night as both are being honored tonight. Taj Young here with LaRon Fields on the broadcast today. We just wanted to paint the picture of what you're seeing. Taj Young is a student athlete here at Alamo Heights. Taj, what is your feeling on a night like this for senior night? Well, for senior night, definitely, you're definitely on, uh, right there as an athlete. You know, parents are go. Be beyond to go cheer for their for their kid, especially one they raised to this level extends their final year of high school. They put some of them been playing their sports since they were young. And especially for, for me, I've been running cross country since I was in seventh grade and my mom has been to almost every single cross country meet. Doesn't matter if it's in the valley or it's down in Corpus or it's up in Dallas. Yeah, very very sentimental moment. Um, it's it's something you see, and it's also if, if if I may add, I've been in this position before myself. <laughs> but this is also a moment of clarity, right? If you're a senior football player, you hear it, you see it before you when you're a junior. But when it's your turn and it's your day, it has a different meaning because you're a senior, and the countdown is official when you hit this point. Well, folks, this is AH Sports Media. Tonight's game will be presented at 645. We just wanted to tune you in as to what is happening on the field as the parents and players are being honored tonight by the head football coach and staff. Keep it locked right here, AH Sports Media, being streamed live on YouTube. We will see you in a few. Offensive lineman number 66, Alex Westmoreland, is escorted by his father, Jason Westmoreland, and his mother, Lisa Westmoreland. And center number 70, Bentley Edwards, is escorted by his mother, Colette Edwards, and his father, Ty Edwards. <laughs> Left tackle number 72, Jackson Hildebrand, is escorted by his mom, Carrie, and David Hildebrand, his father. Defensive lineman number 77, Robert Romero, is escorted by his mother, Daisy Moreno, and his father, Robert Romero, Jr. Wide 
receiver, number 82, Grant McAllister, is escorted by his mom, Loveland Lee, and his dad, Kenneth McAllister. Defensive back and cornerback, number 83, Henry Vicelio, is escorted by his father, Adrian Vicelio, and his mother, Jane Vicelio. <laughs> Tight end, number 86, Anderson Bodges, is escorted by his mother, Kara Bodges, and his father, John Bodges. Lineman. Number 92, Maximus Martinez, is escorted by his mother, Destiny Trevino. <laughs> Defensive end, number 96, Steve Ramon Jr., is escorted by his mother, Sandra Lopez Ramon, and his father, Steve Ramon. Team manager Christian Moreno is escorted by his mother, Amber Hargrove, and his stepfather, William Hargrove. <laughs> Team manager Marcus Moreno is escorted by his mother, Adriana Moreno, and his father, Marcus Moreno. Manager Jesus Dumuran is escorted by his mother Ilse Ortega and his father Jesus Dumuran. <laughs> Student trainer Derek Haynes is escorted by his father Daniel Haynes and is carrying a picture in memory of his mother Erica Haynes. Trainer Reed McLellan is escorted by her father, Tim McLellan, and her mother, Sean McLellan. <laughs> Student trainer Celie Moeller is escorted by her mom, Casey Moeller, and her stepfather, James Martinez. Student trainer Gwynny Moore is escorted by her dad, Bo Moore, and her stepmom, Stacy Levinson. <laughs> Student trainer Natalie Urias is escorted by her mother, Myra Urias, and her brother, Fabian Urias. Cheerleader Celeste Artiaga is escorted by her mother, Raquel Artega, and her father, Dennis Artiega. <laughs> Cheerleader Elizabeth Baker is escorted by her mother, Betsy Baker. Cheerleader Ileana Godinez is escorted by her father, Carlos Godinez, and her mother, Teresa Godinez. <laughs> Cheerleader Carrie Gully is escorted by her mother, Becky Gully, and her father, Lauren Gully. Cheerleader Margaret Hain is escorted by her mother, Allison Hain, and her father, Elliot Hain. Cheerleader Lucy Keith is escorted by her mother, Melita Keith, and her father, John Keith.
cheerleader Kenley London is escorted by her father, Drake London, and her mother, Stacy London. Cheerleader Conley Kate Love is escorted by her mother, Katie Love, and her father, Adam Love. Cheerleader Ava Marie Miller is escorted by her mother, Carrie Lynn, and her stepfather, Mike Lynn. Cheerleader Sofia Remolina is escorted by her mother, Blanca Remolina, and her father, Sergio Remolina. <laughs> Cheerleader Sophie Sutherland is escorted by her father, Dub Sutherland, and her mother, Brandy Sutherland. Cheerleader Isabella Turner is escorted by her mother, Rachel Turner, and her father, Michael Turner. Cheerleader Ava White is escorted by her mother, Amy White, and her father, John White. Cheerleader manager Charlotte Stevens is escorted by her mother, Michelle Stevens, and her father, Rob Stevens. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me, the organizations represented tonight, and the family and friends who are escorting the seniors in thanking each of these five students from the class of 2024 for their dedication and contribution to the Alamo Heights community. We wish each of you the best in your senior year and for a safe and prosperous future. Let's make it a great year. Go Mules! That she wrote, speech to the young, speech to the progress toward.
say to them. Welcome to tonight's broadcast brought to you by Alamo Heights Sports Media Team. Tonight, we're hosting Senior Night here at Harry B. Orium Stadium, Trailer Arzar Field, with tonight's visiting guest, Thomas Edison Golden Bears, and of course, your Alamo Heights Mighty Mules. Tonight's game is a District 14 5A Division II contest, and with the being Senior Night, the air is crisp, the air is clean. There may be some tears in the building from moms and dads because we come to the end of the road for those that are seniors, football players, cheerleaders, spurs, cross country, you name it, it's that time of year. Alongside with me tonight, I have senior, student athlete, cross country athlete, Jacob Taj Young. Welcome to the broadcast tonight, Taj. Uh, thank you, Leron. I'm very excited to be here. Come from the field, and now I'm finally being able to go in the booth. So I'm very excited for tonight. Well, you've been paying your dues, and tonight is one of those things where it pays dividends. So we appreciate you sticking to it, having the passion and the fortitude and the grit to be down there in the trenches with the cameras, interviewing head coaches, talking to Coach Rod Rim at halftime, which we'll still do tonight. But it's good to have you in the booth to give you some more experience. If you don't know, now you know. The AA Sports Media team is led by students. Just because you hear my voice doesn't mean it's an adult production. It's myself, it's the lead director, Mr. John Munoz, who writes this ship, but it's the students whose backs, whose feet, whose legs, whose brains, whose sweat and tears, no blood, because we keep it clean, who drive this programming for you to watch live stream on our sports channel. We've mentioned it, it's senior night, but let's get into it, Taj. Let's get some talking points on what we can expect from Edison. Let me break it down for you. So Edison comes in with a rec overall record of one and six. They are one and five in district play, and they recently, their last game, lost to Edison 33 to 14. Alamo Heights is coming in seven and zero. Oh. They're six and zero oh in district play. Last game they played an interesting first half and an amazing second half against Harlandale with a victory of 60 to 34. Taj, what does break down the teams and tell me what we expect from Edison today? For Medicine, they're coming in from one and six overall. Their district plays one and five. Last game, Edison lost to Highlands, thirty-three to fourteen. So right now, they're they're coming in. They'll be really strong. We'll see how they play with passion. We'll see how they play against Alma Heights tonight. Yeah, well, one thing we know about Edison is they're young, right? They're young in key spots. They're starting a freshman at quarterback, right? Sergio Villarreal will start. Uh, their quarterback that started the season, Samad Bunch, they've moved him to receiver. He's more of an athlete playmaker. So maybe the thinking there is they want to get their playmakers the ball with someone who can get it to them and, and uh, be able to get up the field. We don't know. You were able to talk to head coach Jesse Monreal today from Edison. What did you learn from his interview today? So from uh, what I learned from him, I asked him uh, the growth between uh, the first between week one and to now, and he answered they've they've grown, they come so far, especially with a young team, and they're ready to come and play with passion, like I said earlier, and they're ready because we're playing, they're coming in and playing a playoff team. And that's the only thing they're okay, expecting. Cool. Um, I know he mentioned something. You know, we talked about this before the broadcast <laughs> that to encourage his players, he's willing to sacrifice his own skin and hair, more so <laughs> hair. Uh, they had their first win of the year, they beat Brackenridge, and they had an agreement that if they got a win against Brackenridge, he would say, shave his head. He, along with the rest of his coaching staff, is there anything on the line for tonight's game, Taj? Well, I can uh, I can say this. Uh, they, uh, From talking with him, he mentioned that the player, his players uh, talked to him, and he, if they win tonight, he will shave his eyebrows. Man, that, that's that's commitment, man. Like, I don't know if I can shave my eyebrows. Uh, you got to be in public. We're not on Christmas break. You don't yeah. get two weeks from the girl back. Oh. But 
Kudos to them. Mm-hmm. All right, now let's turn our attention to the Alam Heights Mules, the juggernaut known as the Mighty Mighty Mules. They can score from anywhere. How do you see the Mules performing tonight, Taj? Well, they're coming in. They're nearing the end of the season. But tonight, they still have to play the game. They still have to continue doing what they've been doing. And they start to come in uh, with a win. That's the only thing I can expect from them. Definitely. Winning is everything. Um, sometimes it's not the win. It's how you do it. And tonight will be another one of those nights to see where we grow as, as a team. Who are some players that we need to keep an eye on from this Thomas Edison Golden Bear team, Taj? Uh, from Thomas Edison, we should be uh, looking out for... And, uh, under the direction of David Stevenson. All right, we we can be looking out for uh, Samad Bunch, uh, Sergio Real, and they're leading rushers right now. Samad Bunch has 80, uh, 86 attempts for 598 yards. Adam Sancho, uh, he has 85 attempts for 370 y- yards. And Ethan, also we need to watch out for Ethan Escamilla with 71 attempts for 234 yards. All right. So those are their key players. For Alamo Heights, we already know who it is. We know it's number two, Michael Terry the third. We know it's number 10, Colin Ernst, who just came off of a monster game. 17 rushing attempts for over 300 yards. He had a total of 473 yards overall on offense with six touchdowns. We know he's someone to watch for. DK Garza, sneaky shifty out the backfield. He can get it up and down the field however you want it and deliver a little bit of a powerful punch. If they decide to put in Patrick Ogg in the backfield, he can get his. Receivers, Park Zonker, we got Kingston Kennan. Uh, you, you got a variety. You got Bennett Johnson who can catch the ball at tight end. Plenty of weapons. Tonight's focus, we're hoping that someone from the defense. On our defense, we know that Lauren Christensen is busting his tail every play on that defense. Max Bacon has been sizzling. I've been saying his name all season. We know that they made some changes on defense this week, and we'll see what dividends they play. So let's move to this. In any game, we always look for keys to victory. Taj, for Edison to win this game, what are some keys to victory for them to show up today? Well, along with uh, they have to compete on every single play. They're, they're going up against Alma Heights. They're, uh, they're leading right now. So Edison needs to make sure that they're putting their best effort to every single play along. And also, they need to play with passion just because they're playing against uh, as well. They're playing against with uh, Alma Heights. They still need to Play, do the same thing, play, don't take it personally, and I leave, and leave it all on the field. You're going to get hit, so you just make sure that it's, you just got to be ready for that. De- definitely. Uh, well said. What about the keys to victory for Alma Heights? They must do what to win tonight's game? Well, for Alma Heights meals, they're going to have to play efficient football in all three phases. Just because we're, we're still winning, we're on a uh, – Alma Heights is still winning – especially coming off of playing Harondale, they still need to play to the standard. They need to keep on doing exactly what the coaches, uh, Coach Rudiman and Coach Ricker and Coach Barenko have been telling them all this week. And also, they do not, don't look ahead. I remember talking to Ricker earlier this week, and he said no matter that he talked about uh, no, but no matter what we, uh, we're going to be playing in the playoffs, we, we're playing Edison tonight, and that's what we need to worry about. Sounds like coach speaking. It sounds all good. You, you got to take them one at a time, play one play at a time, one quarter at a time, one half at a time, one game at a time. And that's that's fine by me. Great focus. We're nearing the end of the regular season. There's three games remaining in our district play. As we sat and chatted in pregame, Taj, we talked about what the outlook looks like from the district perspective of playoff seedings right now. After last night's Thursday game between Burbank Bulldogs and Harlandale Indians, there's a shift seismically. The Harlandale Indians suffered a defeat to Burbank. It was 35-21 to last night at the Spring Sports Complex, which puts Burbank in sole possession of second place. So as it stands right now, you have Alamo Heights at first place, Burbank Bulldogs in second place, Harlandale Indians at third place, and Sam Houston Hurricanes at fourth place. Now, Going forward, there's only, after tonight, two more games for Alamo Heights. They have Lanier, and they end with Sam Houston here at Harry B. Orham Stadium, Charlie Arzar Field. Next week, they take on the Lanier Volks at Alamo Stadium at 2 p.m. Make sure you're tuned in to A Sports Media so you can watch our coverage live from Alamo Stadium, the Rock Pile. 
With that being said, the district is shaping up in a way. Did you see this as the way it would shape up, or did you see it in a different light? Well, I knew that uh, looking at the last season, it was going to be similar, but I didn't expect them to come in winning every single game of the season, especially after last week watching Harlandale. They seem, it's, and also coming in from Seguin, they they looked like they're just they're they're going to be a different season. But now looking at it, I don't think they they might lose. I think they could continue to if they do exactly what they've been doing, they can be able to come out with a win today and also in the future. Well, the, the thing is, last year it does look like this year, right? With a different set of nuances offensively, I feel like we spread it around more. The Seguin game last year, we had the attrick around that, but we played well. And when you look at the entire district, though, the biggest shocker, and when I say shock, I don't mean that in any disrespect, but Burbank has really set the tone. We played Burbank two, three weeks ago. They set the tone that game. They started off with the onside kick. They came out swinging. Of course, Alamo Heights has the firepower to swing back and not miss. So it's Bet one of those things wrote, where I'm just shocked to the young Burbank is so listening. to the progress toward. Say to them. Uh, those are your captains for tonight. Taj, one Ladies thing we always look at when we're going here. from game to game and week to week, we heard what Coach Monreal said. We kind of know what Coach Ron Ritterman would say. Play to the standard. You mentioned that in the keys to victory. The standard is pretty high here at Alamo Heights, and people expect Alamo Heights to perform and win. Uh, sometimes we sit here as the broadcast, and we, we take a peek at the fans in the stands, and sometimes – the energy's not there because it's, we've seen this before, this is what we expect. What I'm hoping is that we really get this crowd roaring and start practicing for the playoffs because if we get another home playoff game, it, it, it will be raucous. Last year, what was your take on the crowd for playoffs? For playoffs, so we, we started, we, we played curve little Tyvee, ty and I'll say that because those stands were rocking. No, I was working the concession stands that game. No one was in there. Everyone was all packed in the stands, cheering of cheering for our team, and I bet you that's going to be the same expectation for the first round. De definitely. I can't wait. Like, I'm not, again, I, I'm, let me put my coach's hat, I'm taking my cap coach hat off. I can't wait for the playoffs, right? I know we got two more weeks. I'm looking forward to the same Houston game. I'm looking forward to the Lanier game because um, we get to beat the Rock Pile, and it's a historic venue. But for me, there's nothing like the playoffs, playoff atmosphere and all that goodness. Right now, we're going to pause and give you the opportunity to see the presentation of colors by the Alamo Heights Color Guard and band. Stay tuned. We'll return for the broadcast after the presentation of colors. This is A8 Sports Media. You're watching Alamo Heights Football. Please remain standing and remove hats as the Alamo Heights Mighty Mule Marching Band pays tribute to this great nation, our men and women in uniform throughout the world, and all our veterans with the playing of our national anthem.
gentlemen, boys and girls, get your phones out and direct your attention to the Jumbotron. It's your chance to get in on tonight's action. Scan the QR code on the screen and subscribe to Alamohide Sports Media. Not only can you watch tonight's game with highlights, replays, interviews, and exclusive content, but you also get to submit your burning questions for the coaches and players in the live chat. Be a part of the conversation. As a subscriber, you can also vote for tonight's offensive and defensive players of the game. To Results contribute your vote to player of the game, you are able to elect one or select one offensive player as well as one defensive out. player. Subscribe Make sure you are a subscriber. That is how you can cast your vote. We look forward to seeing your vote because we want to nominate the player of the game, but we want your input. Again, AH Sports Media presents player of the game. Right now, Taj, we have the Alamo Heights Mules looking to kick the ball off. Uh, one of the things that I've been concerned with all season is our kickoffs. I don't know if it's by design, by plan. It's something I haven't really talked to Coach Ricker or the special teams head coach on. Um, but we got to get these kicks down because in the playoffs, you, it gets a little bit more dangerous with the return men. So let's see what we have right now. We have Linus Flores kicks off. It is caught at the six yard line, is being returned up the field. Escapes one tackle, tackled at the 21, about the 21 yard line. That was, a, as you see, they've been kicking it pretty well. It's, that was a pretty good, they still need to stop the ball the pretty soon. As moment they see that, just a catch. Well, th that's, that's kind of hard to do, right? But what I want is more air into the ball to give your team more time to run down the field. When you line drive, kick it, it gives the return team a better opportunity to return. I think that was Emmanuel Diaz on the return there. So right now we have it set where you're, the Thomas Edison Bears will start at the 21-yard line of the Alamo Heights Mules. They are lined up in a spread offense, a tight formation. Edison is a heavy run team. The direct snap to the running back, and he gains about four yards. That's one thing Alma Heights has been improving on is their defense Ethan and stopping the, the ball in the moment, especially for rushing. They're able to build a wall and be able to uh, make a block in their way and you know hold them back a couple more, a couple more downs, and then we can get it back. That's good. That's a good uh, way to put it, Taj. Building a wall is exactly what you want to do to stop the run. What we want to look at is how consistent we could be, right? Like, you can't do it once, got to do it all the time. They've been doing a good job in the run game. The pass games were the struggle right now. Oh, looks like we've got a little false start on Thomas Edison here. We'll see what the Penalty marker say. on the play. Just to get you clued in right now on Alamo Heights defensive starters tonight, we have number six, Henry Bruton, number nine, George Hale, number 12, Gage Sharp, number 20, William Riggs, number 21, Patrick Arriaga, number 29, Max Bacon, number 32, Blake Killian, number 33, Cortland Hanna, number 37, Abel Martinez, number 44, Lauren Christensen, and number 52, Joseph DePierrier. Right there, you see the uh, the Golden Bears try to get wide on that. What did you see in that montage? They, they strung out the play down to the, the 20. They try to get, uh, they try to run it around, but as we, our quick feet, we could be able to stop the ball straight down, right on the, looks like to be the 19 yard. Yeah, it, what's one thing you know, <laughs> with Alamo Heights, you got to pick your poison. Either you try to run through us. You're more than likely not going to run around us. So it's one of those things you got to pick your poison. And one thing that I feel for Edison tonight is they don't pass the ball. So that's the thing you need to do to help balance your attack. Here goes another run out of the shotgun and tackle from behind. And as we normally would have it, it's punt time. 22. Ethan has to be in the ball. Carrier. Now, right there and there, they try to do the same thing again, but Amal Heights knows this. They, they've seen plays like this before. If you're going to start, straight down the middle, the close in, get that now. wall built up, be able to stop the ball, and now we can be able to get the ball back. One of the things you alluded to was playing with passion, uh, and what that really meant was play like you have nothing to lose. That's the hardest team to beat. When you start emptying the kitchen sink and the dishwasher and the pantry, you become a threat. Almost blocked there. Let's see if we can get a good return. Uh, that's a six-piece hot and spicy straight from Wingstop. Go and have the blue cheese and the celery sticks. That boy gone. 
Trip Johnson tripping into the end zone once again. That may be his third return for the year. Trip Johnson. Yeah, so Trip has those, Trip has been fast. Yeah. I've I've seen um, him be able to. He ran track uh, last year, and he was fast then. And now he's bringing to put that on the field. And you're right, he's been getting so many returns and touchdowns just because of how quick and fast he is to be able to get that ball and be able to run it straight in. It's almost similar, to, like I said, about the kickoff. He literally punted the ball. The the Edison Bears punt team didn't even make it down the field. And when they did make it down the field, it wasn't in the area in which the ball was, was getting returned from. So good job on trip to go where nobody's at. That's what we call cat and mouse games. He didn't want to get caught. He didn't. He got the score. So that puts Alamo Heights on the extra board point. with the extra point at 7 to 0. To go. It is 9 minutes and 27 seconds here. remaining in the first half. And we are looking for another kickoff. So let's see what we do here. Hopefully we can pin them back deep again. As I always say, pon the replay, stop them, stuff them, punt, return the ball, or set up for an offensive possession. Right now, Taj, this is where we hope, we wish that Edison would show us a look that makes us actually have to work on our skill set. Mm -hmm. Exactly, with that skill set. And do you, when you were talking earlier about passion, you're right when they have nothing to lose. They can put everything in, into us, and this they could probably put something out there that we out, that these guys have not seen before. And if if they maybe they can do that and play with so much that they have nothing, then maybe they can be able to get through. We'll find on this upcoming offense series. Um, again, when we look at our opponents, that's the one thing I wish. Show me something. Our last week opponent, Harlandale. They emptied the kitchen sink. They tried to give us the business. Unfortunately, we closed the business and the second half. Here we go again. Kickoff being returned from the 10 up the field to the 20. Oh, ball fumbled. And we have a recovery by the Alamo Heights Mule. That goes great for, uh, for the defense. And I'm sure special for special teams and I'm sure the coach is happy because I'm um, for getting be able to tackle and be able to get the ball back and now it puts us in the position to possibly get another touchdown well yeah you definitely want your offense to see the field because if we recover that fumble and take it to the house we'd be right back kicking it off so here's the shortest field position start starting field position of the season we have nine minutes and 20 seconds in the first quarter Alma Heights mules on the offensive attack Colin Ernst on the shotgun receives the snap throws it wide and that wasn't a great pass it almost got picked and there would have been a great chance that that would have gone for the distance or at least a lot of yardage and not for Colin Ernst to be passing he's been he's been throwing passing but he's been way better for rushing so if he if he throws and he tries to find his a receiver fast you just gotta know that he's trying his best and he's trying to get that ball into the hand of michael terry the third in that case it wasn't michael terry but that that's a that's a play that i marked down like something we got to get better at we can't just run the play because it's called we got to see the play that's called in that case the defense had two or three defenders in the area and that's what almost got picked off now we got colin ernst in the shotgun michael terry at the bottom of your screen one-on-one -on -one coverage no safety help Ball, we have Patrick, nope, sorry, DK Garza getting the handoff. He was flanked to the right, and he's up the field not even being touched, and it's not even funny, folks. It's already 13-0. This is not a scrimmage. This is a game. This ain't even practice. This is a game. Just in case you didn't know, it's AA Sports Media. Keep it locked right here. We're going to show you every play, every touchdown, every turnover, and every tackle. Now, DK Garza has also having, been having a good season, especially when he gets his hands on the ball. He's able, he's been able to find those open paths from the defense and be able to get a, make his way through into the end zone. Great observation. He's done a great job of getting up the field. We have for the Mules, Gannon and Laswell on for the extra point. Ball is snap, put down, kick is good. It is Alamo Heights Mules, 14. Thomas Edison, Golden Bears, zero. Nine minutes and seven seconds remaining in the first quarter. We just got started, but the party's on fire. And exactly when you said you're coming in strong and coming in, especially doing exactly what they're supposed to do, they begin those those plays through, and especially for the offensive, uh, the offense. All you have to all you have to get down is, is get the defense and offense to work together and be able to get yourself a win. Yeah, I mean. Tonight, again, you wanted a little bit of resistance. You come in, it's a young team for Edison. 
uh, head coach of Montreal. I know he has a lot on his plate, so I'm not trying to be critical. But again, one thing I always expect from a team is you can be who you are if you're a, a front runner. If you're a team that's still learning how to win, learning how to play the game, sometimes you got to go into games like this where you feel like you're overmatched and you got to swing. And look, if you know you're coming out with a loss, at least do it in a fashion that's going to make sense. Kickoff, short kick by the special teams. Oh, just snuck it around the pylon. And for especially with the arc, he was trying to get uh, he was trying to get it down further into it. It's just a little and bit off. Be able, able to get it. If you just been able to get that kick a little bit, you've been able to get straight down the field, and we could have been to another position for possible well, good. What, what you're looking for, right? You don't want to. In this case, you. How do I say this? In this case, you could kick the ball, make mistakes. It's not going to bite you. But sometimes when you practice a certain way, even play it in a game a certain way. When you're facing an opponent that's equal to you, those kicks are costly. Because look, now we're starting field position at the 30, right? That means we've literally chopped the third of the field off. There's only seven yards to go. When you're facing a more explosive team similar to yourself, you can't afford that. So we got to get that correct. Here we go, Edison in the shotgun. And we have a handoff. That's a carry for about three yards. And for Edison with us, uh with a Every young team. That carry. was Adam Sancho on the carry. Adam Sancho on the carry, especially with the Edison with a, 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 a young team. You still got to be able to get players to work together. It doesn't matter what age they are. You can still get a, a good team with possible great uh, success. And that's exactly what he was talking about in the pregame interview. Yeah, here we go. We have Edison lined up in the shotgun, the spread. Looking back to pass, throws the ball deep, and that is picked off. So again, hats off to Monreal. It wasn't the outcome he wanted, but you got to do it. You have to throw the ball. You have to test them and see if they're ready. Today they were ready. Interception by number 12, Gage Sharp. And the Mules begin first and 10. And they're over. That's a great stop by the Allen White's defense. Exactly, and especially when they uh, picked it off. And coming in, they have to look for, they have to cover those players. and. Exactly for for the defense, they've been practicing, especially getting, making sure to look for those passing plays. And Edison has got to throw everything they have at Alma Heights. Yeah, and that was a good job by the secondary. They they've been tested. Now we see. Now we have Kyle Lawrence shotgun rolling to his left on the roll, throwing it, and it's a uh, long gainer for. DK Garza. He's having a game this that quarter. He's already got his second touchdown. And that was a 60-yard touchdown. touchdown. Catch and reception. Touchdown. And for DK Garza, looking at him, he just makes it look like it's easy. He just gets the ball. He finds that open, gets it in. And it's insane to be able to watch watch that, especially from this view. Yeah, I mean, it's he. I don't even think he kicked it up to full throttle. He literally was probably shocked that he wasn't tackled. It was a basic uh, pass play. Everyone did a great job of uh, blocking, giving great pass protection. Kyler Ernst got in his uh, role, and he threw a nice pass, and DK caught it. We have Gannon Laswell with the extra point. It Last is your Alamites Mules, 21, Edison Golden Bears, zero, with eight Alamites minutes and 15 21. seconds left Edison in the first zero. quarter. Um, Folks, don't forget you have the opportunity today to participate in who the player of the game is going to be. Make sure you're a subscriber to YouTube, and when you go to the channel, make sure you vote in the live chat. This will take place during the fourth quarter. I'm only mentioning that now because you may have to keep a tally. We already have DK Garza with two touchdowns in the first quarter. He may be the front runner for player of the game on offense, and we got to look who's going to be the player of the game on defense. Yeah. And also, you just remember uh, when you subscribe to Age Sports Media, it's not only just football games. We also cover soccer games, and we, you can find our hype videos and any other promos we make. We always put on there on our, on our YouTube channel. Great point, Taj. I'm glad you plugged that because you guys are always hard at work there trying to create content for the fans we're trying to expand the brand we're trying to expand our coverage this year we've taken a big step and we coverage away games so we're trying to do the most for our fans exactly right now we have a kickoff from the Alam Heights Mules from line to floors balls kicked deep balls caught at the five return to the 10 the 15 the 20 stutter step gets outside 
and runs out of bounds. That is Samad Bunch, one of the guys that we got to look forward to. And uh, you can see Samad Bunch was able to find a way with his with the quick feet, able to find a way down. And Alma Heights needs to be able to get away to be able to stop it very quickly. You can tell he was he was dancing around and be able to find a way to stop him. Moment he gets that ball. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Samad Bunch is one of their best athletes, and he's a fleet of foot kind of guy, so he's quick. And again, this this is what things we're talking about, right? One of the areas we got to work on. If he's a fleet of foot, wait till we get the playoffs. Everybody is. Edison in the shotgun in the spread, hands the ball off. They're getting some yards on the running game, which is unique. This is probably the best start for a team to get running yards on first down. Especially with running, we see him try to pass. Uh, we see him try to throw the ball, and you know, like I said, you gotta throw whatever you have at the wall and let, see if it sticks. And you can definitely see that they can def they're doing better with their with their rushing than they are with their passing. So Edison wants to find a any sort of success. They need to be rushing. Yeah, well, they got you still got to mix it up, right? Because mm -hmm. you got a good gain on this run. Right now, it's. Second down and six. You got four yards in the spread again. Running back off to the right. Got a pass. Here we go. Up. Oh, got it out to Samad Bunch. Oh, he slips. Now, for a way, able to get that ball quickly. Pass and Samad Bunch, also, he's uh, he's leading right now with six touchdowns in there. So they're the down. guy that he they need to be looking for. Uh, looking for to be able to get the ball and see the Definitely got to get the ball in your playmaker's hands. You know, we, we noted this at the beginning, but Sergio Villarreal, the quarterback for Thomas Edison, is only a freshman, but he's got a big body. He's got the Escalade package, and his arm looks like he's a little bit of strength to it. So I can see why, because if you, if, I, if you don't remember the beginning of the broadcast, Samad Bunch was the quarterback because of that athleticism, but now you have a big body at quarterback, and he's looking to throw again. Oh, overthrows the receiver at the top. The intended pass was for Samad Bunch from Sergio Villarreal, and that was incomplete. Now we have a third down and four to go. Now it's, it's throwing, no matter what you see when you're trying to throw, or you're trying to try anything you want to see if it sticks. But Alma Heights is still find their way to stop whatever they throw at them. doesn't yeah. matter if it's spaghetti or it's uh, meatballs or even a little butter on there. They can find a way to you know eat tonight. I stand corrected. It's fourth down and five, and Edison is lined up in point formation. Trip Johnson is back to receive the punt. Getting close to a block there. Trip Johnson calls for the fair catch at the 48 yard line. That's an interesting way to, instead of running it, just a fair catch at the 50. Well, it's a good position for them. It's trying to get their way, but you. Expect him to be able to run it Tonight down. Thank, well, thank in this case, he, he played it safe, which is smart. You already got field position. Don't make a mistake. Uh, the ball was kicked well. It was kicked high. His coverage team was there in front of him. So Tripp did the smart thing. He called for a fair catch. You're at the 48, 49 yard line. You know you have a, a big play offense that can score from anywhere. Why risk it? And here we are. First quarter, six minutes and 28 seconds to go. First and 10 at the 49. Colin Hurts with a shotgun. Hands it off to Michael Terry. Michael Terry's running up the field, cuts left, cuts right, looks right, keeps running and tackled by Giovanni Cortina, number 63 from Thomas Edison. Now Michael Terry, he's, he's been doing this all the season. He's, he's a big man, and he's able to f do those quick feet to be able to dance around his opponents and get through the path, and he just muscles his way through. That's the Michael Terry special. We call it grown man running. So let's see what else he can bring to the table. Uh, this is another intriguing formation that offense quarter Mike Branco has out there. We have Colin Ernst in the shotgun. We have DK to his left and Michael Terry to his right. He hands it off to Michael Terry. Michael Terry pushes forward. And exactly what I was just saying uh, uh, when you said the grown man special, he just ran through traffic. He had no, he had no uh, scare into getting torn down. He, uh, he's able to muscle his way through no matter what's, who's stopping him. He definitely can push the pile, and he got a seven-yard gain. Now we're at second down and three at the Edison 31. Colin Hurts on the shotgun. Waiting for the snap. DK Garza to his right. Colin Ernst drops back to pass. He throws it wide open and dropped. 
Throwing deep, I've, I've never seen any offseason from Colin Ernst. He's been go throwing those oh, balls deep down. just to try to uh, see. And it's been uh, there's been some success with that, and there's also been some without. And But it's definitely a good play to, to try to do, especially in a time like this with 21 to 0. Definitely a good play, but you got to have the mechanics. Uh, on that one, you have to have what we call crispicity. You have to have the mechanics. That the guy, uh, Kings of Kenan was wide open four yards before he even got the ball. We need to look for a quicker release. But let's see if we can get it back here. We have Michael Terry to his left, guard to his right, hands it off to Michael Terry. He keeps running and rumbling and stumbling. Picks up the first down, moves the chains, the and the clock keeps running. That's just another way Michael Terry just shows how he's been outperforming this season. And it's not just only this game, it's just been just throughout this entire, entire last week at Harlandale as well. well. I feel like he's been the uh, the safety aid, you know, so to speak, because when you look statistically on paper, it doesn't stand out to you, but you know what he can do. Here we go. It's first down and 10 on the 24. Colin Ernst with a shotgun. DK guards to his right. Two receivers at the top, we're throwing. Oh, that's an interception, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Is that Samad Bunch getting it done on defense for the Edison Golden Bears with the interception? Right there, this is where I'm telling you, uh, Colin Arts has to be able to get the ball out quicker on purpose. Not because he feels it, because he knows it and he sees it. And that one was not the best time throw. And that's why Samad Bunch got an opportunity to pick that one off. And it's not the only time Samad Bunch has been able to get interceptions. If you look at the stats right here, he's been, he had six interceptions. Six. But hey, he, he, Samad Bunch is a gamer, right? He's the kind of guy that you gotta recognize on the field. And let's see what the Edison Bears do with this turnover and see if it energizes them. Sergio Villarreal in the shotgun. Up, they run the ball for a gain of about two yards. Now, with again, with us rushing, they, they're, they're trying to get their way through our wall, but we just cannot, we're glued together. Alamo Heights has been able to way to stop it just before. Yeah, well, that's Adam Sancho is trying to run, but the thing you gotta realize, right, your, your, your O-line has to create that push. You gotta win the line of scrimmage. If you don't win the line of scrimmage, you're only gonna get what you get, especially against a front four like the Alamo Heights Moors. Here we go, it's second down and eight. I don't know about you, Taj, but I anticipate a pass here and it may be involved number five, Samad Bunch, or Adam Sancho in the flats. Here we go, Sergio Villal waits for the snaps. He, there's a pass, oh, what did I say? Samad Bunch, tunnel screen, he runs around, he loops back, I don't know if that was a great decision. He's still on his feet and he gets thrown down for a loss. Even with a, a play like that with a Samad Bunch, it doesn't matter what's what they try to do, it's just Alma Heights is going to keep on trying and see that play, see that play through and even going, they can move him up and down the, the field of people to get their position in to stop that ball. Definitely. Well, they gave him, they credited him with some yards there. They didn't make it for a loss. It'll be third down and five. This is crucial right here for Edison Bears. They got to get the first down. If you don't get the first down, you're forced to punt again, and who knows what happens from there. I don't see Alma Heights shooting themselves in the foot more than once in a game. Here we go, Sergio really out for the snap, gets it, fakes the handoff, throws it to Ahmad Bunch, Samad Bunch, and he is captured, tackled, and raptured all behind the line of scrimmage. scrimmage. Now, Samad Bunch is a great player, but if you keep on throwing to him again, then they're just going to find out who you're going to, and it's going to be your man. So this could be a, you have to start thinking about other people to hand the ball to, especially for openness, because if they keep on giving it to the same guy, then Namal Heights is going to just stop him in their place. Fair point. I think what, what we actually look for also, right, is maybe not the same play. Maybe get get him down the field running. Use his jet to turn loose and throw it deep to where only your man can catch it. Yes, you're right. If you keep throwing the tunnel screen, the bubble screen, that's not going to work on Alamo Heights. Here we go. Edison Bears lined up to punt. Trip Johnson back and punt received formation. With two minutes remaining in the first quarter, snap is received, ball is kicked. Trip is over to receive. He lets it bounce. It takes a Alamo Heights bounce towards the 50. And you were exactly right with playing it safe. He, he was just going to let that bounce. He saw it He saw it up in the air before he could have caught that. But, you know, you got to play it safe. You still got so much game left. You, you can't be throwing yourself in the way just to get another touchdown. Let me change that to playing it smart, right? Because he had to travel more than 10 yards to get the ball. So the kick, it was a good kick for Edison. It just wasn't a good kick to take that chance which is to your point why risk it
because if you risk it, no biscuit. Here we go. <laughs> Alamo Heights, Colin Ernst gets to redeem himself on this drive. He's in the shotgun. We have Michael Terry at the bottom of the screen. We're in a trips left set. Calls for the ball. He keeps it, and you know what Colin likes to do. He likes to get up the field and chuck a deuce. He's in that end zone faster than fries out of hot grease at McDonald's with salt. College your boy. Touchdown, Colin Ernst. Yeah, make Colin sure you have that honey mustard as well. And Colin Ernst, he, having it with li like the last, like the last game. If you see, he's been throwing, he's been uh, rushing. He's right now, he's been doing great with running that ball, especially finding his way. And you saw, especially at Harlandale, you know, throw. Uh, he's got running it down, finding that opening, get it through. And it's not only just uh, DK Garza who can have the fun, and Colin, the quarterback, can also have the fun too. And not just Mike Terry. Uh, the thing is, I want to give a shout-out to Mike Terry. He actually chased Colin to the end zone to make sure he was going to get there safe and no, no tackler could get him, no defender could get him. Here we go with Lazo with the extra point. Ball's down, snaps up, and the kick is good. You're exactly right, making sure you protect your quarterback or whoever has the ball. That's a that's your favorite guy you want to have with you, especially on your team, is someone protecting you. Having the ball, you want to make sure you're going to keep the ball, and especially if people get more yardage, you want to have someone right there with you, your best bud, your best friend. Yeah, right now that puts Alamo Heights at 28, Thomas Edison at zero. Uh, Edison is trying. They're fighting, folks. This is not just 28-0. We're just squeezing the ketchup packet to the nth degree. Edison is trying. They're running the ball. They're throwing the ball. It's just Alamo Heights, Mighty Mighty Mules football, and that's what they do. You are watching Alamo Heights football on A8 Sports Media. We thank you for tuning in to the game tonight. And again, don't just be a watcher. Be a participant. You can participate in the player of the game selection tonight. In the live chat, you will be able to vote for one offensive player and one defensive player. You must be a subscriber in order to vote. And there's nothing wrong with being a subscriber because when you subscribe, you get to keep it locked to all the content that we produce at A8 Sports Media, from football to soccer to coaches' interviews to whatever we do. And also you're mentioning that Edison is trying. I don't think they'll give up. I still think they have a lot of passion in them to keep on going in. And like, it's, and like I said earlier, it's the first quarter. You still have so much game left to be able to come back. I don't know if you've been watching the other games, Taj, but normally when there's a threshold at some point when a team taps out, um, and I don't know what that is. But here we go, the kickoff. Laswell with a kick deep, received at the five, tackled at the 20. That was a really good kick by Laswell. He got it deep. He drove him back to the goal line, and Edison will start at there. And exactly right when you say that's a great kick, he almost got a uh, – he almost got the uh, uh, punt return to um, a slip and trip. He could have, he could have gone down at the less than ten, and now, but he's able to uh, be able to keep it on and get it right down on the 18 yard. Yeah, to your point, what 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 you what you always want to do is make sure you give your guys <laughs> <laughs> the opportunity to cover the kick. You don't want to outkick your coverage, and you don't want to underkick your coverage. So here we go. Edison's back on offense. Sergio Villarreal is the quarterback. Calling for the snap. Hands it off to Adam Sancho. He gets a couple yards. He's a tough little runner. Here we go. The, the pile is moving. He's still running. I don't know if they called it down now. Oh, that wasn't Adam Sancho. That was Ethan Escamilla filling in for Sancho. Once again, another key player to for the Edison Bears. And, it, and like you said earlier when you said try not to do the same play, you also – they they try to with Ethan Escamilla and they're trying to get play all their cards on, on to see what's going to work for tonight. Yeah, and that's all you can do, right? You can't ask for much more. You can only be who you are and do what you're capable of doing. Here we go, Sergio Sergio Villarreal in the shotgun, running back off to his right, trips to the bottom of the screen. Uh oh, we actually have a quarterback keeper by Sergio Villarreal, and he gets about a yard on that keeper. Now that's a and that's also an interesting play for the quarterback, especially for a freshman like him. And you said he's a he's definitely a guy who he be able to find his way through the pack, and he it, maybe he could have gotten it through. Well, we don't know. We'll see what he does tonight. Well, there was a hole there, but it closed very quickly. And then all this is experience. When you have a freshman at quarterback, and you have mostly um, underclassmen playing in, in the game tonight, what you're trying to do is build something. Not just for this year, but for next year. You got to set the tone. You got to get the continuity. Regardless of who the opponent is, you got to face that giant. And this is a giant tonight. Mm -hmm. Here he goes. Edison. Sergio getting the snap. Drops back to throw. Ball's in the air. 
ball is incomplete. They were tending to get it to Samad Bunch, as I mentioned to Lucy earlier. You got to try to get the ball to Samad Bunch on a deep route. Uh, if I was an Edison fan or opponent, I would like to see that ball a little bit more in the middle uh, because I think that's a far throw for a freshman to make at this stage. You want to kind of make it where it's um, a, a shorter throw, but at a longer distance. Yeah, exactly. For a freshman to be able to learn what works and what doesn't, and especially for a especially throwing it deep to some odd bunch it's the first time we saw him try to do that and we're gonna play a quick commercial we'll be right back for the second quarter get ready to experience the thrill of online sports like you've never seen it before Age Sports Media is your ticket to the heart-pounding action. Catch all the live coverage of Alma Heights sports events. And exclusive insights from dedicated athletes and coaches. Don't miss out. Tune to Age Sports Media and be part of the excitement. Alamo Heights Sports brought to you by AA Sports Media. Your passion, our coverage. Catch all of the live coverage of Alamo Heights sports events. And exclusive insights from dedicated athletes and coaches. Don't miss out. Turn into AH Sports Media and be part of the excitement. Alamo High Sports brought to you by AH Sports Media. Your passion, our coverage.
way through it, but their defense was just uh, did not was not able to get there, and especially uh, with quick feet. Now, one thing is uh, that Alma Heights has, especially with senior night, they had to play because they're playing with front of their parents, but tonight it's going to be is different because it is special for them. And yeah, for definitely. You have a couple seniors on that defense, Lauren Christensen, Cortland Hanna, uh, to name a few. Right now, Edison hands the ball off again, getting up the gut again. It's Ethan Escamilla. He's, he seemed to be the more effective back tonight. He's getting yards. Um, it was first down and 10. Now it will be second down and about five. Finally, and they're at the 40-yard line, so they've already moved up the ball 22 yards. They're doing something right now. They're cooking. Yeah, they're, co they're cooking, and especially giving Samad Bunch a little bit of a break and letting Ethan Escamilla be able to have some fun with the ball. And it's been showing them some uh, success, especially when getting down. And Definitely. As you mentioned, Shabbat Samad Bunch is the lone receiver in the bottom of your screen. Sergeant Villarreal is waiting for the snap. He fakes the handoff. He is trying to run, but he is not fleet of foot. Like I said, he's an Escalade. He is not a sports car. And that was a tackle for loss for your Alamo Heights Mules defense. I believe leading the charge in that. And one thing is, is especially with Edison, needs to look out for it, and especially for their, their QB. They need, to, they need to find a way to, if it's not going to be able to throw, you just got to run it. But Right, he's built like, he like an Escalade, so it's going to be a little bit different for him, especially for a freshman who's well, learning. I, I like what they're doing, right? And, and I said before, it's, it's not about if you actually are successful doing it. You just can't hand the ball off and expect that to be the answer. They're trying different things. I can't fault them at all. Here we go. Drop back pass. Oh! Thrown just slightly behind him, some odd bunch, and it will be a fourth down. Looks like he was throwing it down on, at Samad Bunch. A little bit of a height difference right there. And he's, and if you saw, he was able to kick, get that quick release. He has an arm. I would definitely, we can definitely say that he does, that he has, has the strength to be able to throw hard and down. Joshua Lopez in punt formation. For Here we go. Bears. It's fourth down and 11 from the 35. The Edison Golden Bears are setting up for a punt. Alamo Heights has a return man back, Trip Johnson. He fills the punt. He gets upfield, and once again, he is untouched. Later. Oh, he got touched once, twice. Unfortunately, though, his jet speed, his jet ski gets a little bit faster when he gets gone, and he's gone. I guess he saw that opening, and you're exactly right with that jet ski. He just has that speed, and it's hard to stop him. But it looks like to do either to be some uh, flag on the play, to looks to be. Maybe it's the touch, but honestly, but Trip Johnson has that speed, has that jets, and able to get that, be able to turn his legs over and over. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he can sense it, right? He has the turn up speed he has the ability to get to the hole and get through it and that's the difference between an experienced team like alamo heights and a team like edison who's trying to get there their playmakers make plays unfortunately in this case that touchdown was called back and i didn't get to see why it was called back i just see them marking the ball at the 39 of alamo heights so unfortunately trip johnson remains with just two touchdowns not too shabby, though. <laughs> I'm sure he'll have more chances for when we see you later tonight. Well, we'll see. I mean, I don't know how long they're going to keep him in. But right now, you have Michael Terry and Colin Ernst in the backfield. So, and we have trips to the top of the screen. So this may be a handoff to Mike Terry. And without further ado, he gets up the field, and he's running hard. He just stiffed armed somebody. He stays on his feet and bounce. Number seven gets a leg. Number three gets a leg tackle on him. And that was Jason Moxjemba, who saved a touchdown. Mm -hmm. For a size difference like Michael Terry, you, you can see he has that speed and he has that strength. But Edison was uh, found a way to to just keep on going for the legs to make sure to because that's the only thing you need to stop him for Michael Terry is his legs. Hey, when I was a young buck and I was on varsity, I wasn't trying to stop a freight train, so I, I feel their pain. Michael Terry is a grown man. That's a business decision, and the decision they made is hit that man in the leg so he fall down, and he after 20 yards, fell down. Yeah. Here we go. Colin Ernst in the shotgun. DK Garza back offset. The ball is handed off to DK Garza. And like 
naturally, he finds a hole, which leads him to the end zone. Touchdown, D.K. Garza. And for D.K. Garza, we see him. We see him earlier, able to find his the open the openings that the defense has left, and he with a snake uh, find his way through. You know, go through the maze, but that maze was actually more open than ever. But find a way to a touchdown. Yeah, I mean. He has great instincts with his runs. All of our backs do. Patrick Arriaga, DK Garza, Colin Ernst, Michael Terry, when he's back there, he just happens to be small enough to where he can get around that corner. You can't find him. Again, allows well on for the extra point. Ball is snapped. Kick is up. And the kick is good. Well, penalty marker on the play. I stand corrected. It was a little bit, a little bit left, and yeah, kick, kick was not. The extra point was not good. That's the first miss of the night for Gannon Laswell. Now, yeah, uh, as, I guess the, for point out as far as for Gannon Laswell, you be able to get a, uh, kick Outside, the ball at all. You be able to get to play. It's actually a be able to get good so thing. Good. The will and still won't hurt Alma Heights with a, a 41 lead in the second quarter. Well. Um, Here's a new development. Either we're re-kicking that, because again, I didn't get the clarity from the officials. And still no signal or explanation of what we're doing here. But we'll take it. Gate Sharp is the holder. Laswell's extra point is good. And with now the extra point from Gannon Laswell is good. Maybe I was fortuitous. Maybe I saw in the future, but I knew it would be good because he's been money all night. They were like, you know what? You didn't get it first time, but we give second chances around here. So you were able to get that second one in and put in Amal Heights with a 42-point lead in this first half. Yeah, I mean, it's eight minutes and 10 seconds left in the second quarter. Alamo Heights is definitely expressing themselves in a manner that we expected. Um, Edison is not for a lack of effort of trying. They're trying to get their youngsters to compete at this level. They're doing a decent job. Can't say anything negative about them. Kudos to the Edison Bears. Exactly. For, for what it's worth, you got to you gotta get it and get get that ball down, and for but for Alma Heights setting the tone, they definitely have set it for for a home game in senior night. Laswell, the kickoff for the Mules. Back senior night's always players. special. To us. You number five, bunch, number twenty-two. I can't imagine any of the players taking this game lightly. Here we go with the kickoff. Kind of like a short kick. A fair catch. Especially with those seniors. You know, shout out to all those parents who show up to games home and away. They, they're the real uh, real workers here. They they come out to all the games, especially early in the season when it is blazing hot coming from the Texas heat. They're still out there and they're still cheering for our Mighty Mules. Well, that's what you're supposed to do as a parent, right? That's that what undeniable love, unconditional love. And, and they get a kick out of it, too. When, I see more parents, I hear more school spirit than some of the kids. And it's it's always fun to me because in this community, Alamo Heights, people support one another. The community comes out, they're great. And this is nothing less than what you would expect. Um, again, like you said, it only gets greater when you get to the playoffs because now you're like, you get that real small town atmosphere where not that everything shuts down, but people are here. Edison Bears on the scramble outside to the right. Nice pickup, gain of four Number yards. 12, yeah, exactly with playoffs, so the atmosphere is way Number different. Right? The attention is more points. thick, and you, there's more there's, the play, there's more cheering, and you can barely hear yourself think, especially as a player down there. But right, I'm sure you, with the band roaring, it's just going to be a different way, different atmosphere than we've seen in the regular season. Yeah, as expected. Right now, I don't know what Edison can do. Um, again, they're coming out in this trips formation. I suppose they will pass the ball on this down. We'll have to see. But up, oh, handoff, running the ladder, getting up. Oh, some Max. And was, that was Max Bacon, as always, on run support, filling it up and cooking. Career, 
29. And it looked to be was a uh, number one. A number 20 for Edison, and then they're uh, rushing. And down. you just got sometimes, you got to start throwing it because if you keep on rushing and hurting the, the players, are going to get hurt. So no, they're not going to get hurt, but you, you, the, you got to have you got to maintain the balance, right? Because they can't throw every time. That stops the clock. You kind of run the clock because you want to run the ball because you want the clock to run. But at the same token, that was a good run. That just was better defense. Look, we're, they're getting yards on the run. They're, they're, they're old linemen are getting feisty. The they're they're pushing the line of scrimmage. They're doing what's working for them right now. That was third and two, and guess what they got? First down. Mm. So it's one of those things where they're they're sticking to what they do, right? And but they got they do have to sprinkle in the pass here and there and, and test the secondary. He's gotta make sure to keep the, to keep the defense on their feet. Yeah. Maybe exactly just doing the same play over and over again. It's just gonna get boring and you're just gonna get stopped. Yeah, here we're now in a new look. Twins, doubles on both sides. Sergio offset running back to the right, fakes the handoff. Now that's the play we don't need to see ever, no. right? Your quarterback isn't fleet of foot. He's not gonna beat our edge rusher. He's not gonna beat our D lineman. So you went from great set of four downs to get a first down to now you're in the hole on second down you are in a passing situation that's obvious so if you do run the ball and get stuff you're not helping and this is how teams get caught in the spider web they get caught in the tangle web they try to get cute they get stopped for a loss then they end up punting trip goes on a journey or colin comes colin Ernst comes out we go on another journey here we go edison looking to throw the ball throws it Incomplete over the middle. Still yeah, attempting to Samad Bunch. What do you think about that, Taj? I just think that for the QB, and he's young as well, it's so he's, now. I'm sure he's, he's trying things that he's definitely is not meant to do before just to see what works. And to another, but he did uh, choose a player, Samad Bunch, because him, uh, Samad Bunch, and also Ethan Escamilla are going to probably be his best friends uh, throughout the game. Yeah, I mean, to your point, I would like to see him try another receiver. I'm sure they have hands enough to catch a ball and catch us off guard. We'll see. Obvious passing down situation right here. Either you hand it off to be safe. Nope, drop back. Sergio looks deep. He's throwing the balls up. The receiver's already out of bounds. The ball wouldn't be complete for any kind of yardage. And it's another fourth down. The ball went sky high into it. And it looks like uh, to be... And for, for another QB, it's just... He's just trying to throw it deep, you know, maybe trying to see what he can do. And for he definitely has the arm for it, but he needs to have a little bit more accuracy to it. Yeah, and again, those are the growing pains of a freshman, right? So, sometimes your freshmen get it, sometimes they don't. Uh, we'll see. Here we go. Punt team on for the Edison Bear. Oh, Bob's a snap, gets the kick off. Trip receives it at the 30, runs all the way to the far sideline, cuts up, tries to dance around some defenders, cuts through, carries the ball all the way to the Alamo Heights 40. That was an impressive run. He probably ran longer than he got in yards, but it was impressive. It wasn't a touchdown, but he got the ball across the 50 and into positive territory. And that's exactly what Trip can do. He can not only be able to turn on the Jets, he can also, if you saw, he can stop the Jets quickly redirect himself and then turn him back on great way to put it he eluded and evaded and he got upfield love it <laughs> so here we go the mighty mighty mules offense what do they do which poison do they pick run pass shoot lay up jump dribble hit the ball you pick it they can do it so let's see what they got colin arns in the backfield waiting on the snap we got twins up top single receiver downside balls caught thrown Caught by Michael Terry, he shakes a little bake. Oh, pushes his defender down, hops over, and is pushed out of out of bounds at the 24-yard line. And it looks like and it looks like Alvin Heights is on the move. Mm -hmm, exactly, and, exactly. And but also, if you can see, uh, they're trying anything to be able to stop Michael Terry. But it's just, it can't be for a guy size like him. He's not. A, he's not in high school. He's definitely someone who. Way different than that. New play alert. This is a new formation. They got a shift going on. Look for Park Zunker. Oh, look for Terry on the swing pass. Park Zunker with a nice block. And, oh, Michael Terry hurdles 
a DB. It's not the first time we saw Mike, uh, Michael Terry try, uh, try to hurdle Michael someone. Terry we saw him in the, the ball exactly. Ball. We saw him do it in the last game as well. Yeah, and that I don't think that time the hurdle was necessary Change just because there was a size advantage. You were the down. Goliath, and David was right there trying to make a tackle, and you helped him out by jumping. Now he's able to knock you down. Still got us in in, in plus territory. We're at the five yard line. It's first and goal at the five. Still a scoring opportunity. Four minutes and 10 seconds left in the second quarter. Your Alamo Heights Mules 42, Edison 0. Colin Ernst in the shotgun, split by both backs, waiting on the, the snap. Ball's low, he picks it up, ball's thrown. Ball is caught, and they're saying he's out of bounds. Did not get both feet in. That attempt was to Michael Terry the third. Ernst pass intended for Michael Terry the third, incomplete. It's second down. All right, so here we go again. Colin Ernst in the gun. DK Garza to his right. He hands the DK Garza. DK Garza goes up the middle, and he's pushed back. Edison D-line trying to show some resistance DK right now. They Garza, were, the they are trying to stand up strong and prevent play. another the score. It will be From third and two at the two. What if you were a coordinator, if you were Coach Mike Branco, what kind of play would you have right now? Uh, for I would say uh, running the ball is their best option. Throwing it can be dangerous, especially when you have people who can be able to get the ball. Yeah, you can get you more more yards, but it's better to play safe and just try to run it down. Well, you you also have to work on you know your other opponent. So in this case, I get the safe part, but you're up by 42. There's nothing safe. Of, I mean, unsafe about it. In this case, the D line is actually Michael bowing Terry up and standing still, here. standing strong. We were denied. Michael Terry ran the ball up the middle. We got one yard. It is now fourth down and one. So it'd be interesting to see what play call we have here. Definitely like to see a run pass option. Keep the ball in Colin Ernst's hands and see what he can do to make magic happen. And it, ex exact, uh, exactly, you know, make the magic happen. Try and uh, I, I think I made. We use words uh, poorly when I say play it safe. I say, you know, try to uh, be a better way to be a runner. If you saw running the ball got them got them more touchdowns than they thrown, and yet they have they have thrown less. So we'll see what we have here after the punt. This is a first. Alamo Heights on for a field goal attempt, and it is good. Gannon Laswell with a 19-yard field goal attempt, and it is Alamo Heights. 45, Edison, zero. Two minutes and 13 mi seconds remaining in the second quarter in the first half. Your Alamo Heights Mules have been dominant, to say the least. And in this performance, we've seen touchdowns from DK Garza, Trip Johnson, and Colin Ernst, all the like. Taj, how would you sum up this first quarter so far? Uh, second, well, second quarter, but also you can include the first as well because we've seen kind of the same thing, especially from the offensive end, is that you cannot stop Michael Terry and also you that Trip Johnson is fast fast but you can also throw a Colin Ernst in there to be able to, uh, to be able to run the ball in everyone has a has a chance to be able to use use the ball for tonight and that's one thing Alma Heights has been able to do for this, this entire season all they can do now is just keep on doing what they're doing and be able to get one imposing your will on an opponent is something that you know gladiators love to do and in this bout here, again, I give Edison credit. Like you, you talked about earlier, they haven't tapped out. They're still playing with passion. They held us to a field goal. That's a win. Here we go with the kickoff. Kickoff is received at the, oh, he called a fair catch. So it will be down around the 15. Seems like he spotted at the 14. So with two minutes and 13 seconds fair left, your Alamo Heights Mules defense will take the field. And this is one of the things that you see throughout is when they're changing it. Instead of running it in and know you're going to get stopped, you're just going to take a, take a fair catch and, you know, play it from there. Way to say that eloquently, Taj. 
Taj, we're waiting on this to start. Tell us a little bit about your cross country season. What's next for cross country? In fact, thank you for saying that because cross country is heading down to Corpus Christi on Sunday and we'll be running uh, for regions. We're running on Monday, running at 8 and 8.30. And if we get, if we get, uh, pass, uh, we get um, bigger than fourth, fourth or uh, third, then we'll be able to make it on to state and be able to go up to Round Rock to be able to run state. And this will, if we make it to state, that'll be our third time in a row, guys and girls team making it to state. Well, let's cheer on the cross country team as they fight their way to state. If they play with an ounce of dominance as a football team, make that book that trip to Round Rock. Here we go. Edison starts the drive with the six yard gain. They've got the ball to the 20 yard line against the Mules. We have a minute and 45 seconds and counting down. Again, it's Alma Heights 45, Thomas Edison zero. It almost looks like they're content with milking the clock here, but they're in the spread, waiting for the snap. They're taking their time. Their rushing attempt is stopped, dead in its tracks. And that's just one thing uh, that you've seen Alma Heights doing before, Find, going up the middle and just encircling the person with the ball to be able to stop, just like glue, sticking them to the ground where they can't be able to get any more yardage. Yep, here we go. It's third down and four. Plenty of options. Uh, looks like they're content to get out of this quarter or this half. They drop back the pass, and that's shocking. Ball is picked off. For a touchdown for your Alamo Heights Mules. Number 30, Ryan Stetson with the interception. That would be Ryan Stetson, junior linebacker for your Alamo Heights Mules, getting his first touchdown of his career. And I'm sure that must be very exciting for him. He's He got the ball. He saw the uh, – he, he picked it off. He got the ball in his hand. All he can see – is the end zone in sight, and he wanted it. You can tell he ran it straight into the end zone, and he was able to get the meals, another touchdown. And for his first in the season, you know what? That counts for a celebration after this. He's kind of spoiling senior night because he's a junior, but he stepped up in front of the pass, and you, like you said, he would not be denied. He got into that end zone. Gannon Laswell on for the extra point. Mickler with the hold, up, down. Kick is excellente. Laswell. Gannon Laswell with, with his leg will be tired tonight. He better get an ice bath. That's all I got to tell you. So it is your Alamo Heights Mules, 52. And then we're still 45 seconds left in the half. And also remember, near the, now we're near the end of the first half, is that you can decide what the player of the game is going to be by subscribing to the Alamo Heights Sports Media YouTube page. You're watching it right now. All you have to do is scroll down a little bit, click the subscribe button, also like, and you can leave a comment during the fourth quarter. And also, you don't only have to leave a comment during, leave a comment in the live chat during the fourth quarter. You can also comment, you know, to talk anything about the game, and then maybe we'll respond. Maybe we won't. We'll see. Now, uh, now the meals are getting ready to punt it. We have 45 seconds left in the first half. Right here, I wouldn't be shocked, right, if you saw an onside kick. What do you have to lose? Um, if not, you just squib it down the middle. At this point, I, I think Edison's going to take a knee. I don't see Coach Redman using his timeouts. Here's the kick. And it's up, and it's deep. He calls. See, this is a rookie mistake right here. He calls for a fair catch at the two-yard line. This is where your youthfulness kind of holds you back a little. It just comes with it. Just comes with having a young team. You have players who are a little bit maybe inexperienced, and that what that's why practice comes. And I'm sure by the next uh, next time, or even the next game, or even the next year, he will have perfected that and making sure that they could possibly have a better yardage when returning that punt. I stand corrected. The ball will be marked at the five. I'm still waiting on the officials to spot it. Again, first and ten from their own six yard line. Six yard line is the official marking of the ball. So right now, here's what I expect, Taj. I expect the the Golden Bears to take a knee, which is odd because you know most teams don't know how to step the ball under center, so they can't really take a knee at the goal line. So they'll probably just run it to kill the clock, and they do. They hand it off. 
Straight up the middle, ball is stopped. It also looked to be, it looked a little bit different. Instead of encircling the player, they were able to string out a little bit, but they still weren't able to get past that, uh, that they, the, for defense. They weren't able to get past them. Just a little confused here. I don't know if it's a clock malfunction, but typically you don't have to run another play um, on 40 seconds. And they're just waiting for the clock to drain to zeros to get out of the half. They're not going to run another play right here. So, folks, as Taj said, don't forget that you have the opportunity to vote for player of the game. As we approach halftime, we're going to send it down to Sydney Fry to interview Ron halftime. Ritterman. And our score, Alamo Heights 52, Edison 0. So, so Todd, right now we're wrapping up the second half. What you have to look forward to, folks, I know the game may be a little out of hand, but we still got the band performance. Uh, love to see our Allen Heights Mules band perform. And then, again, you get the opportunity to do player of the game selections. Okay. So keep it locked to eight sports media, Allen Heights, Heights football. And now we can see that Redmond's walking over to the camera with our newest member to the broadcasting team, Sydney Fry. Now, Sydney Fry is uh, our newest uh, uh, sideline commentator, and she's getting, getting ready. Now, uh, Sydney, what's going on down with Riddiman? So, right now we have Coach Riddiman, and it's 52-0. and 0. What are you guys doing so great? Well, our guys were, were really motivated this week to practice well and to play our best game of the, of the year, and so far they've done that. So, we're going we're gonna to quit looking at the scoreboard and just expect them to play even better in the second half because we got big goals ahead of us. And in order for us to get there, we got to play better football. Okay. okay, that's a very good thing. So what would you rate your performance right now? Well, their effort is, is out unbelievable. They're, they're playing as hard as they can. They're doing some good things. we still got a few things to clean up. We had a couple of busted assignments that we're going to fix at halftime. And again, we can't be influenced by the scoreboard. So we got to know how we're playing. But, and I'm excited about the second half. Okay. What are you guys going to try to do better if there is anything you can improve on right now? Well, it's really about communication and just the execution of whatever play is called, both offensively and defensively and in the kicking game. Uh, and we've done a great job, but there's still some things we can get better at, which means there's a lot of potential for this team to be really good. Okay. Thank you so much, Coach Ritterman. Thank you. Appreciate it. That was Sydney Fry, once again, our newest member to the comment to the sideline commentator team and looked at me, she was smiling while doing it. And once again, near in, as we, before we kick it off to the, uh, uh, before we kick it off to halftime, it's remember, remember to subscribe to Alma Heights Sports Media to be able to vote in the fourth quarter, fourth quarter. And we'll be right back after this message. You're watching Meals Football, brought to you by Alma Heights Sports Media. Laurent and I will be here for the second half. Get ready to experience the thrill of Alamo Heights sports like never before. A8 Sports Media is your ticket for heart-pounding sports action. Catch all of the live coverage of Alamo Heights sports events. And exclusive insights from dedicated athletes and coaches. Don't miss out. Turn into A8 Sports Media and be part of the excitement. Alamo High Sports brought to you by AA Sports Media. Your passion, our coverage.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Introducing your UIL Region 29 Marching Contest Sweepstakes winner, the Edison Golden Bears Marching Band. The Edison Golden Bear Band proudly presents Movement 1, Manana, Movement 2, Tarde, and Movement 3, Noche, of their Dia de los Muertos UIL show. Trumpet soloist is David Wally. Flute soloist is Felicia Fuentes. Guitarist, Marcos Montavo. Trumpet duet, performed by David Walling and Ricky Godinez. Flute duet, performed by Felicia Fuentes and Crystal Aguilar. The band is under the field direction of Aliyah Garcia and Nicholas Estrada. Color guard captain is Zaida Avalos. Thank you for all of your hard work this week as we prepare for area. Now, sit back and enjoy the show.
band is under the direction of Chris Garcia, Matt Eldred, and Roman Morales. Color guard instructor is Samantha Bravo. Percussion instructor is Jeremy Ventura, assisted by Ian Ortiz. Head instructor is Kayla Solano. Bears fans, let's cheer the man on as they advance the area on October 28th at Rutledge Stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, the Edison High School Golden Bear Marching Band. And a special thank you to the amazing Golden Bear Band Boosters for all of their hard work. Sequences on flute, 
Julian Mendoza on oboe, Lauren Ciccoli on flute, and the saxophone quartet featuring Christopher Carpio Walker, Andy Lang, Raul Villarreal, and Andres Gonzalez.
Get ready to experience the thrill of Alamo Heights sports like never before. A8 Sports Media is your ticket for heart-pounding sports action. Catch all of the live coverage of Alamo Heights sports events. And exclusive insights from dedicated athletes and coaches. Don't miss out. Turn into A8 Sports Media and be part of the excitement. Alamo High Sports brought to you by A8 Sports Media. Your passion, our coverage. Welcome back to the second half of Alamo Heights football on Alamo Heights Sports Media. Remember, this game isn't over till you say it's over, and we need you to help nominate offensive and defensive player of the game. To do so, subscribe to the 8 Sports Media channel, vote in the live chat during the fourth quarter, and voila, when Phil is on the field talking to Coach Ron Ritterman, we will then bring on the players of the game. Let's take a look at some highlights from the first half. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir.
Uh, we've seen Amal Heights come in strong and gain the stop on uh, stop on the ball. Like I said, the glue building that wall and circling the player on that punch of turn. We've seen uh, a couple of our receivers, even someone on safety, be able to get a touchdown tonight. That's including that's uh, Trip Johnson, Colin Ernst, DK Garza, Michael Terry, and also the uh, newest. Uh, his first one of the season, Ryan Stetson, after that interception near um, the end of the first half. And now Edison, they were still playing strong. No matter how many times they were stopped in their place, they still came back, lined up, and get ready for, for the snap. And I'm expecting Edison to keep on doing that because they will not quit. Well, you summed it up best, right? You you expected to keep coming on. I think we're going to see from a different way to the players, the though. Bears. I think Rod Riemann has to go into his bag and get to his depth and allow some number other seven, players Park to play Zunder. the second half. And number 14, I'm not Trent saying Johnson. it's over, but I see the podium being built for the lady who wants to sing the song to say, que So here we go with the kickoff. Alamo Heights stops the ball. So here we go. Uh, it was a short kick. Yeah. On offense, Robert see who comes out to Mickler play. Let's see if Robert Mickler or Brady Binia or if Colin Ernst comes back out. Let me see. Colin Ernst is trotting onto the field. Fields begin first and ten from the 39. Well, so we see some uh, of the offensive offensive line changing. As I saw, uh, one of my uh, good friends, Anderson Boggs, still on the field. So so here, we, here we go with Colin Ernst in the gun. Michael Terry behind him. We're in the pistol formation. Definitely going to be a run here. Oh, it's a keeper. They fooled me. The ball's deep, and the ball is knocked away by Edison, number 80, Alan Rodriguez. Now, that's something that Colin has yet to down, is those deep throws. They can get you great yardage, but they're risky, especially when it comes down. Your, your receiver must be wide open to be able to get that cleanly. To be honest, he was open. It goes back to mechanics. As a quarterback, you don't want to throw in a hurry, but you got to throw with crispicity, which means you have to have your mechanics tucked and tight. You got to throw off your foot and power the ball. The DB was undercut the route, but he was beat deep. So you got to get the ball over him, and that's what touch. Here we go again. Shotgun, Patrick Arraga getting the carry, getting up the field, running, bursts of speed and power. Dragging his man down to the 36. And now here we have another person to be able to show their strengths. That's Patrick Ariaga. He also has a chance and he also was able to muscle his way first through down. and be able to get the first down for the Mules. Yeah, he got the first down and like I said, another back, right? <clears throat> it's one of those things where you almost have to give credit solely to the O-line. Not to say the running backs don't deserve credit, but the O-line opened those holes for them to get to that. Here we go again. Pistol formation. Michael Terry, the lone back. Colin Runnels up top on the top of the screen. Colin Ernst in the pistol. Waiting on the snap. Colin Ford. Hands off to Michael Terry. Michael Terry around the right side. Gets up. Jukes one man. Runs to through one man. Runs through two tacklers. And he is down at the 21. Michael Terry the third. The ball Bacon carrier. Tackle he by saw he William was not really uh, keep on going after that first change. block. So he, he, found, he found another way to get past down. that. And then he was just stopped by two men. It's hard to, to get uh, through when more and more people are piling on to you. Definitely. Um, that one I like to see a little bit more burst and break it outside. But, you know, he's a grown man. Here we go. We have trips up top. We have... DK guards in the backfield on the right side of Colin Ernst in the spread. Here comes Michael Terry in motion. Fake the handoff. Option pitch reverse to Trip Johnson, who used the speed to get around. Clean block. And Trip Johnson has tripped himself into the end zone. Number 14, Trip Johnson in for the Mules. Touchdown. Touchdown, Alamo Heights Mules. Trip Johnson with his third touchdown of the evening. This guy, I swear, uh, Colin, uh, sorry, Trip Johnson, pardon me, uh, each time he sees the ball, he has it in his hand. It's just an open field for him, be able to just weave his way through. And I've said this multiple times before, he is passionate when he gets that ball, and it doesn't matter if he's up, it's no matter what is happening, he will run it. 
when he has the ball. He has an appetite for the end zone, and the man wanted to eat. Here we go with the extra point. Laswell up. Thank Laswell, you. good. It was a line extra driver, point. but it made it through the uprights, and that's the right way to be. Here we go. It's Alamo Heights, 59. Thomas Edison, zero. You are watching Alamo Heights football on Alamo Heights Sports Media. This is a student-driven production, and right now they are producing their tails off. Give them kudos if you see them. Let them know how well they're doing. We got the cameramen who are out there braving the elements and people in the control room and booth giving you the production that's so crispy and clean from highlights to touchdown after touchdown from tackle and run. Alamo Heights Sports Media is the finest student-run media program in all of San Antonio. <laughs> no. No, thank you for that, Fields. And also, I just wanted to say this as well. You were mentioning he's a uh, trip to eat. I feel like he, was to, he said to you that he likes to eat pancakes. Is that correct? He does. And I, he must have had a stack this morning because he's got energy for days today. He has been running untouched. He's been running around people, weaving in and out of traffic like he's on the 10 highway or 604 if you're in San Antonio. Yeah. Or if you're 35, you're feeling you're feeling crazy. Well, yeah, you know, I said yeah. the 10 because I was oh. I was I was mentioning my California uh. dreams where on the 10, you know, mm -hmm. you kind of got to go a little five uh, fast. Here we go. We have Alamo Heights taking their sweet time for the kickoff. Edison is out to receive, not a TV timeout by any stretch. Um, but on this kickoff, Alamo Heights gets the ball for the um, Edison gets the ball for the second half for the first time. What are your thoughts on what they should do? For Alma Heights, I feel oh, for, for for Edison, I feel like they should just keep on doing what they're doing and just stay stay passionate and just leave it all on the field, no matter what's happening. And we've seen that they're going to be going through the stick, dirt, and, and mud to be able to get that ball down the field. And I bet you Back they're not going to stop. Edison. At this point, you can't stop. There's uh, <laughs> there's there, you can't leave the, the game right now. You got to be here for at least another 22 game minutes. Uh, the clock probably is going to run through. So it'll, it, it'll expedite that, but here we are. Kickoff is up. Kickoff is deep. Kickoff is received. Edison tries to advance past the 20, gets one break. Tackled out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. Sancho with the return. And that's, that was Adam Sancho on the return. Mm -hmm. And Adam Before, Sancho has shown, uh, has shown definitely that passion about going through it. We've seen him going straight smack into Alma Heights defenders. Just, you know, because he knows that it's – doesn't matter. He's still going to just try his best to get that ball a little bit closer in because that, that inches can definitely come back. Yeah, definitely. The uh, the player who's had the most impact for Edison has been Ethan Escamilla. Oh, we had a change of quarterback. Samad Branch is back at quarterback, which means we probably have some more quarterback runs. Receives a snap, it, it, and he's running up right side, left side, jukes right, gets to the 40 Four-yard line. That's a nice athletic run by Samad Branch. I can't call the Wild Bear because he he's been their quarterback. That wasn't a trick play. That was a play that played tricks on us. So let's see if the defense can uh, bottle this energy up and keep him corralled. And that's exactly for one of the why they're, he's their key player, Samad, uh, Samad Bunch. Is that he's small and he can he has definitely have that quick feet to be able to weave his way through, and I bet you we're probably gonna see more of that later this half. Yeah, I can see right here a handoff to, up, oh, it's a keeper by Samad Bunch again. He's got blockers in front. He's got John Arzola blocking in front, getting a nice gain. See, this is respectable right here. Take the scoreboard off, right? What I'm seeing from Edison is what you want to see from a team. The game is out of reach. But you're still trying to run new plays to keep your energy of the program going. Players can sense when a coach is giving up. And right now, Coach Monreal of Edison is sending a message to his team. The fight must go on. Don't worry about the scoreboard. We do it today. It'll work for tomorrow. So here we go. They got Sergio Villarreal back at a quarterback. And it's a run by Ethan Escamilla. Deep run. Maybe giving up the first touchdown of the night. And nope. Saved. Oh, wait. 22. Josh Hurtado with the saving touchdown tackle. Good speed by Josh Hurtado. He would not be denied and he would not allow a touchdown on his watch. It, that might be uh, different because it looks like they've they called it a touchdown from from the two 
Uh, it's from the two refs. Oh, they did change it. I, well. Oh, wait, never mind. Sorry, scratch that. Yeah, no. There we were playing the first down. You were right. <laughs> It. But we were just saying. No, they did. You're right. They, that was an extra point, two point conversion attempt. So it was a touchdown. So we did not get the game saving tackle. But that was a great effort by Josh Rotato trying to save the touchdown. And you were just and you were just saying it right then and there that this is not this game is not over. You know what? You can no. The game is over. over but, for, it, but, but forget about the scoreboard. They're still gonna play it. To their best, content. and that's just you know, that's just I can give so much respect for that, especially as an athlete. As in, like I'm running through the course, even though I'm, I know I'm probably not gonna get a PR, I'm still halfway through. I'm still gonna finish this strong, just to show that I'm not gonna give up, and they're definitely not giving up. It goes back to the keys of the game, right? Compete on every play. They've done that. Play with passion. They've been doing that. Leave it all in the field. They're showing that. So kudos to the Edison coaching staff all the way through into the players like right david versus goliath you gotta have the mentality that you got the stones to play the game today and they're 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 hanging in there in their own right so the unfortunate thing though is right you you give the ball back to goliath mm -hmm. and uh when goliath strikes it's it's a hard hit mm -hmm. so let's see who comes out for the mules we have the kickoff return team if you're edison do you onside kick do you squib it or do you kick it deep this is a this is unfamiliar territory. We've only had one kickoff from Edison, and I don't remember what this is the first time. And I see Michael Terry years. out there as well, and you're and you're exactly right. You, you better be you better be careful for what you're doing because you know Trip Johnson. He's gonna get if he gets that nice ball. Nice squib kick. Oh, not filled it cleanly. Went out of bounds. DK Garza couldn't fill that one cleanly, and it went out of bounds at the 28 yard line. Exactly. When you come into it, when you're coming up to a Goliath, you don't want to just kick it up and just give it to them. And they've seen it right then and there. What happens when they kick it up and hand it, hand it to Alma Heights? They're gonna have to kick it low and just hope and just hope it, hope uh, be hopeful that it's just gonna run into a way. And they, and that. yeah, that time it worked for Edison. They kicked it, they scooped it on the ground, and DK Garza wasn't ready for it. He couldn't fill it cleanly. The only good thing for Alvin Heights is it went out of bounds, so they didn't have to worry about a turnover. So here we go. Robert Mickler, the junior quarterback, in for Colin Ernst. We have, is that Aiden Villarreal to his left? We've kind of made some wholesale changes here, so let's see. Waiting on the snap. Mickler calls for it, gets it. Yes, that is Aiden Villarreal, number 36. Or sorry, Thomas Gutierrez. It seems like they, they made some the changes. Carrier. Yeah, Thomas Gutierrez was a linebacker Tackle as of last week. I, I guess I, I forgot Aiden is number thirty-eight. Down. The six and eight look the same. But this is not the one time that uh, that Redmond has changed up the lineup to to see what works and what doesn't. Well, I mean, you get the luxury, right, of checking week to week when you're ahead in the game. You can tinker with things. You can see. And the other beautiful thing about this is you put a lot of different people on film and tape and you don't know what it's going to look like from week to week. So even as a player, you're on notice. Are you, if you're not performing, you're not going to get put in. And that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Clock is counting down. We're at 7 minutes and 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Robert Mickler waiting on the snap. Thomas Gutierrez left offset. Call for the snap. Oh, Edison jumped. They didn't snap it. He hands the ball. Oh, he hands the ball off to Thomas Gutierrez, and he gets. He's dragging the pile. He gained about seven yards on second down and nine. It, oh, no, he gained the first down. Moved the chains, Thomas Gutierrez. Good, tough, hard-nosed running there, Taj. Yeah, that's exactly what needs to be done, especially for players who are in different positions that they probably have not played before. You just got to throw your head into it, you throw it your all, and just to see if it works. And in this case, it definitely has worked. You got to take a take advantage of the opportunity in the moment and own it. And that's that's the way football works. Here we go again. We have Twins right, single wide receiver up top. We have Robert Mickler quarterback, Thomas Gutierrez to his right. 
Mitchell calling for the snap, receives the snap, looking to throw. Oh, once again, Samad Branch. He is not leaving any leaves on his branch. This boy's got a pick. He's got some yards. He's the he's their he's their, he's their team. He's their heart and soul of their team. And he says, "You tried me once, shame on you. You tried me twice, shame on you again." He is not going to give up, and he's probably one of the, one of their players. Maybe if uh, the rest of the team gives up, he is not going to give up for for tonight, especially for how high he's playing right now. He's earning all the credit tonight. I mean, that was a clean pick if you've ever seen one. This goes back to what I said earlier with Colin Ernst. You can't throw the ball because that's the play call. You have to throw the ball because that's the open call. If he's not open, eat it, run it, do whatever you got to do. But don't throw it with the guy who's already had a knack for getting a pick. Don't give him new life and energy. Here we go. Sergio Villarreal is in at quarterback. He hands off to Adam Sancho who is gaining some yards running backwards and sideways at the same time. And that's once again going going back to uh, for so corners. And he, he's shown that he can be able to run the ball down. Not it's just play, when he knows when to do it. Well, that was Robert Mickler on that, that pass. That wasn't Colin Ernst. So I'm saying he didn't learn from Colin Ernst when he threw the interception that I can't just throw the ball to throw it. I got to see it and make sure it's there because that was tight coverage by Samad Branch. Here we go again. Samad Branch is at quarterback, their playmaker. Adam Sancho lined up to his right. Ball is snapped. Ball is up. Oh, Samad, Samad Branch keeps the ball, and he gains another three yards. It'll be about third and three. And this is Edison keeping the fight alive. They have the ball for the first time in Alma Heights territory, other than the long run, which didn't start in Alma Heights territory. So here they are. They're trying to chip at this 59-6 lead. And they can possibly, right now they're just seeing, they probably have red in their eyes right now, seeing what, they're, they're in their, not in their home territory, but that does not mean they cannot play like they're at their home territory. It's moments, well, it's moments like this that help build character. It's moments like this that make you feel like all the hard work, all of the drills that coach makes us do, all of the things that we hate doing in practice, all those hot days, they're starting to pay dividends right now. And again, I'm not a fan of moral Time victories, of but I understand them. And for Edison, you'll take any kind of victory you can tonight because you're trying to build a program. You're trying to have your best players lead the program. And if you give them the opportunity tonight to showcase their talents, they will just do that. They could end up being the Burbank from next year. Burbank right now is second place in the district. And they're, it's not by accident, it is by their design. Exactly, very exactly. Now we'll, we'll probably see more coming in for that, and probably with the same players, Samad Bunch, and also not only just Samad Bunch, but also Adam Sancho and Ethan Escamilla. Well, we have the Wild Bear right now. Ethan Escamilla is lined up at quarterback. He's got the ball. He's taking it up the middle. They put more men in the block than we could. They're trying to get that first down, and it looks like the Fils is going to spot it. I don't know. He's walking on the angle, so I don't know what that means. Where did he, yep, first down, Edison Bears. So there you go. There's a play designed by the offense of Edison. Whoever the offense coordinator is, he is putting them, their best players in position to make plays. Now that's just that does also hurt the Alma Heights defense. They're going to have to get back to what it was in the beginning is to stop that ball, especially when they see the big guy uh, for someone like uh, uh, Ethan Escamilla just running in. You need to get all your people just to throw at him. Samad Bunch gets the snap from center. There's a flag on the field. There is a flag, and not much yardage there from Samad Bunch, but it was a worthy effort. Samad right Bunch now, carrier. alluding to your last point, Alma Heights is definitely putting their twos and threes. The so this Alma isn't Heights. the bunch that you would normally see, so they have to warm up a little bit. Down. We have a false start on Edison. That's going to drive them back five yards. So it'll be second down and 15 if we accept the penalty. Our first out of 15 if we accept. Yeah, they're moving it back, so it looks like they're going to be accepting that. And But that does, but also just shows Edison. what Edison's going to do to be able to get that first down. And maybe that is jumping the gun a little bit, Still but that just down. comes in. You need to be passionate, but you got to make sure you're not going to you know, go, uh, go before the uh, snap is called. Edison's mixing it up here. Sergio Villarreal is back at quarterback. He's launching deep. Oof. Receivers open. 
and once again, great a, defense right there. Yeah, and that what, is Gannon Laswell. Not only does he kick extra points and kickoffs, but he defends receivers as a defensive back for the Mighty Mules defense. And once again, going back to the Edison offense, especially with Sergio Ver, uh, Villarreal, is that he has an arm that can make it and make it that distance. It's just once again, is it worth it to the point where you're going to be able to get to that receiver? Yeah, it's worth it. You have nothing to lose, so you throw it. What I want to see is mechanics, though. Footwork matters. He may have the arm, but you need the feet to work with the arm. That was a nice deep throw, but it wasn't. It didn't put his receiver in the best position. Here's another throw over the middle by Sergio Villarreal. He completes that pass to, to, pass Jose, to Vargas. Jose Vargas. That was a nice slant route. He hit it right in between the linebacker. He was able to pick up eight yards on that. Now we're down to third and seven with it's three minutes and 35 now. seconds to go in the third quarter. You are watching Alamo Heights football on Alamo Heights Sports Media. The best student-run media production in all of San Antonio, Texas, led by John Munoz. And also remember uh, to subscribe to Online Sports Media YouTube page in order to be able to vote for the player of the game in the fourth quarter. So remember, click, click that subscribe button and vote in the comments. Oh, Sergio throws a deep ball. Unfortunately, Samad Bunch catches it, but out of bounds. We uh, dodged the bullet the there because he was bunch. gone. And going back to earlier, down. before the, the play before with Jose Vargas, is uh, Edison giving the ball to a different, you know, different players just to see what will work. And in that case, it did work, and it was able to get them close to a touchdown with Samad Bunch. Yeah, well, again, this goes back to footwork and timing. You, he was open before he was open, and he waited till he was wide open to throw it, which allowed the DB to squeeze space and make it harder for him to come down with the ball in bounds. Again, all the things you got to work on in practice. Now they speed up to the line. It's fourth and seven. They're going for it. Sergio's back to throw. Uh-oh, was there a timeout? Edison calls a timeout, and they were granted that before the snap. Right now, Edison. Three minutes and two seconds here in the third quarter, live from Harry B. Orham Stadium, trailer is our field. Your Alam Heights Mules, 59. Thomas Edison Bears, Golden Bears, 6. Taj, we were talking at the break about other sports at Alam Heights and what they're doing. You have an update for us about our tennis team. Yes, exactly. Our tennis team beat Bernie Champion in the regional finals, and they'll be going off to state uh, I don't know, uh, in the near future. And this is a great thing for tennis because this will be another time of them having a chance to be able to win state. And they've had a great, a great season. They beat uh, Bernie Champion 10-6, Mission, uh, the week earlier, Mission Sherryland 10-7. And they're probably just going to keep on going. And we, we wish them much luck. Coach McQuist and the tennis team, that's back-to-back -back trips to the state title uh, tournament. So good luck to the golf team and congratulations on your success. Sorry, wrong coach. Here we go. Sergio drops back. I don't understand that play call. He's getting chased. He throws it to the ground, That's which would have been short of the line to gain. The defense dodges two bullets, creates a turnover on downs. Kudos to that unit. Now it's offense. Your turn to shine. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Coach Oxford. I meant Coach Oxford, not Coach McQuiston. That's golf. Maybe I'm being fortuitous, and maybe golf will return back to state as they went last year as well. We're just living in the riches yeah, over here at 09, so let's keep it flowing, guys. <laughs> All sports on deck, doing what you do best, and that's win, 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 win. And I'll say this. I know much a bunch of seniors on the tennis team, and they have definitely have shown their true colors in a good sense of, of how good they are playing this year. We're efforting to find a volleyball update as they played MacArthur tonight. We have Robert Mickler in the gun. Thomas Gutierrez with the handoff and the carry. He bulldozes his way for a two-yard gain. And that's just there another thing Thomas for, for Edison. is hitting her head first, going straight into it, just trying to throw everything you got at it just to get those couple of yards. Even though it's a little, it's a little it can definitely be good in the long sense. Yep, here we go. Alan Heights huddles. We're down to two minutes and 25 seconds in the third quarter. 
Robert Mickler's in the gun. Aiden Villarreal, senior Aiden Villarreal's in the game for the first time. It's senior night. I wouldn't be shocked if he got a carry right here to uh, see what he could do in the run game. Handoff. Up oh, keeper. Robert Mickler spins out. Why they blow the whistle dead? Was there a timeout? Oh. Delay of game. Ah. Delay of game penalty against There's the a delay of game on the Alamo Heights Mills offense. Five yards. And it's still Five yard down. penalty that will push them back to the 23. It'll be second down and 13. You just got to make sure just to Checking get ready and get going. Because that could definitely, one. even though we are leading spectacularly, that can hurt, especially if it happens in, let's say, another game that in the future. Well, definitely, but it, it just, this is where it gets sloppy, right? You, you hope to clean these things up. Mickler in the gun. Aiden Brother also is right. Hand, oh, he keeps it. Mickler's getting shifty. He's getting shifty with it. Rumbling, stumbling, bumbling down to the 39, 40 yard line where he picks up a Alma Heights Mules first down. So, right now, they need to get a little bit of a tempo and a little rhythm. Um, based on the play clock and the game clock, you may get about three plays out of this before the quarter ends. We have 20 seconds on the game clock, a minute 10 on the play clock. Sorry, game clock is a minute seven. Play clock is 13 seconds. Robert Mickler gets the ball, hands off to Aiden. No, he keeps it. Robert Mickler is looking for more pay dirt. He gets tackled at the 39 of Mickler Edison. And this is just this is just good to see like players um, who were able to be able to show their uh, show what they're good at. And Robert first down. Robert, uh, Mickler. Robert Mickler, thank you, has shown that, especially in the sense during this quarter. Yeah, to come in off, you know, he plays A back as well, so he's mm. got game rhythm, he's got a sweat, he's not coming off cold turkey into the game. So he's already been amped up, he's been blocking. This will probably be the last play of the quarter. Let's see what we do here. The keeper, are we going to throw it, are we going to run it? Here we go. Up. Oh, we're going to throw it. Bomb deep. Ball's open. Kingston. Oh, see, again, the, this is why you got to have your feet. Your feet and arm have to work in concert. It's not good enough to have the cannon of an arm. You have to have accuracy, Second especially down. on your deep ball. They put it in place where nobody can get it, so that's the, the bright spot. And I was mistaken. With that pass, that gives us seven seconds left in the quarter, and it's only second down and 10 at the 41. Exactly for what you're saying about mechanics, and you, you need to like, like what you need to wait to to be able to see that receiver, but also you need to make sure you get that release. And it was just a little bit over, so maybe wait a little bit longer. You could have got that. Yep. Aiden gets the ball. Aiden rumbles and stumbles and bumbles. He's at the twenty, the fifteen, the ten. Pushed out of bounds at the four yard line. Real, that will end the third quarter. Alma Heights Mule, 59. Quarter, Mules, Thomas Edison, Golden Bears, Bears 6. six. This is the Alma Heights Sports Media production. And, Taj, tell them what the lucky fans get to do in this quarter. Well, you guys, you're watching the broadcast right now, but why don't you just scroll down and subscribe to the Alma Heights Sports Media YouTube page, and you can decide the offensive... And def uh, or defensive player of the game tonight during the fourth quarter. All you got to do is scroll down a little bit, click that red subscribe button, leave a like as well, and you can comment in the live chat. And not only you can, and you can only, also you can comment whenever you want about the game, anything about the coaches, whatever. You just, also, this channel is not only just for football games, we also produce uh, hype videos for our, for our sports teams including football which was released and also we volleyball and cross country so you want to see all this stuff also you want to hear more of fields just click subscribe and leave a like and you can see more you know here's what's amazing if you're watching why don't you tell about five friends tell five friends to log on this season 
even though the Rex is wrapping up, we cover playoffs, we cover home games and away games. And like t- my man Todd said, we cover soccer, we cover hype videos. So this is the place to get all your sports content for Alamo Heights Sports. It is the fourth quarter. We have arrived. It is 9.02 p.m. And it is the fourth quarter here at Harry B. Orem Stadium. Trailer is our field. Your Alamo Heights Mules are on the attack. The ball is in place of the six-yard line. Robert Mickler's been running. Aiden Villarreal just had a big gainer. Let's see what takes place on this play. Number 16, Brady Pena. In a oh, Brady Pena was in a quarterback. He has the keeper. Oh, another swap of that. Junior quarterback Brady Pena. He had Thomas Gutierrez in the backfield and Aiden Villarreal. False start against the Mules. And we had a false start, so that would erase that run. It goes from first and goal to second and goal. Close, but no cigar. But that just goes for Brady Pena just to, to show another uh, Alma Heights meal what they're capable of. And it, it's even though it's against uh, some, uh, the we lead, we're leading right now pretty greatly against um, against Edison, but Edison has shown they're not going to give up. So for someone like Brady to to be able to come out here, that's just it's respectful. We got Trip Johnson at the top of the formation. We got the full house backfield with Aiden Villarreal, Thomas Gutierrez, Brady Pitney calling for the snap. Gets it. Hands it off, keeps it. Brady Pena around the corner like a Cadillac with no slack. Touchdown for Brady Pena and, and the Alamo Heights Mules. Touchdown. You know what? This is something with Brady Pena. Just can be able to come up and be able to get a touchdown for the Mules. Another, like I said earlier before, another meal. Ritterman has a lot of cards to play, and especially leading, leading now. Uh, cause with a huge lead right now, we we can uh, we can you can tweak with it a little bit, and in this case it worked with with a different QB with a different QB. So you know what? Um, that leaves Alma Heights 65, and with a and a kick is good, which brings Alma Heights to the new score of this game of 66. Alma Heights is up with Edison Bears at six. This right now is at. The clock right now is at 10.58 in the fourth quarter. And we're just seeing Alma Heights bring it back for the first touchdown into the fourth quarter. Now, I was just, now we're just talking about, you know, players and bringing it in. And one thing is for sure is definitely the ones who don't really get to touch the field can still show what they're, like, what they can do. Yeah, you know, that's 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 the only silver lining and beauty of a game like this. Not often do you get to go to a football game and get your first string, second string, and third string opportunities to shine. Yes, unfortunately, it's at the behest of another team, but as I always say, everybody in Texas goes to football practice. And this is what it is, unfortunately. Until UIL decides not to play favorites and stick people in districts they don't want to be in, this is the, this is the cup of tea you get. Um, maybe if they let more equity into the situation and not listen to one group of people, not to mention LH out there near Austin. Um, but then you wouldn't have this situation. So it is what it is. We're dealing with the hand we're dealt and understand that we are doing the best we can with what we got. So yes, you get to see Brady Pena's, Aiden Villarreal's get some shine. Thomas Gutierrez gets some shine. Clay Prevost gets some shine. Kickoff is deep and returned. And whoa, somebody just got body slammed. I don't know that that felt pretty good. The ball... Was it loose? I can't tell what's happening out there. I just see bodies all over the ground. I don't even know if it's football or rugby right now. <laughs> and I was like, returning. once again, Samad Bunch still feeling feisty, still having a lot of energy in his system, and he's just going to do just whatever he can to be able to get past that line. And in this case, it it did brought the the first yard to the 28th, but still, it's still that passion. They still have it. Yeah, but I can tell right now that these Edison Bears are getting tired. I just watched Samad Bunch run off the field, and his body language said, give me a nice, tall cup of water and give me 
something to eat because he looked like he is tired. Yes, but with that tiredness can also bring a little bit difference to the plays for some of the players. Here we go. Sergio Villarreal in the gun. Adam Sancho to his right. Hand off to Sancho. Sancho gets past the first wave, but not the second. He is down at the 30-yard line. That's a two-yard gain on first down. And Adam, Adam Sancho, one of us one of the players who still can see he still has a little bit left in him to keep on going now we'll see if he can be able to keep that for the rest of the quarter well i mean at this point it's not about keeping the rest of the quarter you're just trying to you're trying to end on a on a sweet note you're trying to get to that end zone again and let's see what happens here sergio is not in the game it is some odd bunch he's directing his players we have john arzell in motion Samad Bunch is running. He's breaking through tackles. He picks up another Thomas Edison first down. That's a nice Samad game. And once, and like you said, uh, we're just then it's not just to finish the game because you still want to have that digni dignity. Further and they are the showing that that yes, we are losing right now. Yes, it's near the end, but we're not gonna just give up. It's like I said, I think I said earlier, even uh, like during my race, it's, I'm thinking about not thinking about, oh, maybe I'm not going to get this time correct, uh, this great time, but I'm still going to give it my all to the bitter end. And that's a good way to put it right now. Sergio Vidal's back in. John Arizola on the jet sweep. Hand off to Sancho, and he, oh, bites through the arm tackle of Narcy Wickley. Looks like he was trying to pull someone off of him Stop while he was doing that. And it, once again, okay, he's still down. got that burning passion in him. And I cannot say it even more. So even though, yes, their team's a little bit smaller and maybe they can, don't have that much subs in, it doesn't matter to them. They're, they're tired, but they're still going to go for it. Well, they definitely don't have the depth as Alma Height, so that's what I mean by they're tired. This game is like, they. it almost probably to them as – as players for Edison, this may f have felt like two football games because you're not used to going against the brute strength and the speed of Alamo Heights. And now that you're getting it, you have to wonder what kind of a toll that makes. So I'm looking at some of these runs. They're not finishing them at this point. Sancho Their play the design is still crafty and creative. I would like to see them hand the ball to John Arizola from time to time because he still has energy and he has a little burst. So let's see what they do here. And that was also, once again, Adam Sancho who tries to get, get it down. And now it's going to be the now. third down. At the 30. I'm oh, sorry, at the, at the 45. Yeah, it's third down and eight. So right now, what we've normally seen in this situation is Edison throws the ball. The question is, is it going to be the number five, Samad Bunch? Is it going to be the number 10, Emmanuel Diaz? Who's it going to be? We'll and we have Sergio dropping back. And as always, he's not dropping back far enough. That's intentional grounding. Yeah. I don't know that it got back to the line of scrimmage, and I don't know that it Passing was outside the tackle three. box. It could have been outside the tackle box, and so they're not Pressure calling ground. He just couldn't line. see it, so he just had to just throw it. Number you got to get rid of the ball, the and maybe that it's in that in that case, it, it still it didn't it still didn't hurt, but it didn't do them any good either. Well, it did hurt because now you got the punt team out there. Um, and you don't get to maintain Good possession of the ball. When you don't have the ball, you don't control the game. It is fourth down and eight at the 45 with seven minutes and 44 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Don't forget to plug in your vote for player of the game, offense and defense. Ball is snapped high, retrieved by the punter. The ball is kicked. Trip Johnson receives it. Trip Johnson's on the sprint game. Trip Johnson's on the two fingers and the biscuit. It's Tuesday on Popeyes, and this is a special, baby. Trip Johnson to the end zone one more time. Trip Johnson's definitely going to be eating those pancakes. He probably already ate some pancakes before, and he, you can just see that. It is, it is the end of the four, it's near the end of the game, and he still Trip has Johnson it in him. Well, here's the thing I got, right? If you have three touchdowns on punt returns, at some point you can't kick the ball to the man. And you were just saying that earlier, yeah, it, brings, uh, it did hurt to them because they brought up the – punt team. I was about to say, because you see Trip Johnson in the sights, and you know you do not want to have him get that ball. And you can see here, he's running through, and he just out, just jets them. 
even when they try to tackle him, and he goes straight into the end zone for a touchdown. Joshua Lopez should have done everything in his might to knock him out of bounds, and he broke through that arm tackle. So, again, credit to Trip Johnson. He takes yet another trip down into the end zone. You know, this is a marvelous night from – you know, again – it's always funny. Gannon allows with the extra point. It is 73 to the six uh, in the fourth quarter with seven minutes and 27 seconds. It always baffles me that on senior night, there's always some underclassman that tries to steal the show. And tonight was that night. It trip just saw. He just, honestly, I don't even know if it's just trips fall. He, maybe he knew his he knew his senior night. He's like, you know what? I'm going I'm gonna put the best game I have right here. Just to show them what I got. Just to show. Just because I'm a junior. Well, I, I don't even, to be honest, like, let's watch. Not take anything away from Trip, But they handed the man the end zone free three times. He got touched the last time. This last time he got touched. The other two times he wasn't touched. So it's, it's not like they've made it difficult for him. And he had to run through arm tackles and double teams and triple team tackles. He's just using his jets to get to the end zone. Kudos to him. He still has those jets. It doesn't, it's not like he's turning them down. Well, at any those pancakes ain't weighing them down. If anything, they just <laughs> gave him more fuel. Here we go. Alamo Lawrence, Heights, Lawrence, fourth Lawrence, quarter. Lawrence, You're Lawrence. watching Age Sports Media. This is a live football broadcast. Your mules are set to kick the ball off again. Mr. Gannon Laswell has kicked the ball a plenty. And now we have in kicking Mr. Linus Flores on the kickoff. He does a good job of forcing the recept receiver on the kickoff to bobble and fall down at the 31. I, at this point, Edison is showing a little bit. You can definitely see it in their their eyes. They're a little bit tired. And, you know, they've been showing it, but they still have some dignity, dignity left in them because, you know what, we got to give it to them. They're playing so uh, someone who's just has – they're in their home territory, and they're just giving everything they have, and it's just going to be hard. Yeah, I mean, we knew that coming in. They knew that coming in. Let's be honest. It's the immovable object versus the movable force, and both of those are on Alamo Heights' side. Here we go with Samad Bunch. Look like he refilled in charge because he's got a little burst there running for five yards. So now it's second down and five. Depending on the spot, it may be second and six. That was a good first carry. It is second and five. Ball's marked at the 35. We have a timeout. And as you can see, well, you can say everyone else is tired, uh, but we can see some wide bunch is still have, has yet to just show them uh, at least. On your screen, you see the QR code where you can vote for player of the game, offense, and defense. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Vote in the live chat. Right now, it's the fourth quarter. It's your time to vote. This is presented by Age Sports Media on YouTube. And remember also to be able to vote to subscribe to the YouTube page and just leave a vote in the live chat. Here we go. Ball's handed off and taken down after a two-yard gain. Here we go again. Strike up the band. It's third down. So, third down, what does Edison do? They've been passing on third down. Do they try to run on third down? It's a manageable third and three. Who goes in the quarterback, Sergio Villarreal or Samad Bunch? What's it going to be? It looks like we have Sergio at quarterback, Sancho to his right. We have no Samad Bunch on the field. So, this is going to be new. It's either going to be a drop back or it's a handoff to Sancho, and he powers through for... Oh. What could be a first down for Edison, the way they're spotting it, that is a first down for Edison. Move the chains. And there you go for what uh, you've seen. They've seen what doesn't work, and that's definitely throwing throwing it on a third down. And to be able to run it, to be able to muscle their way through to get that first down is definitely a good play. Good sign. Definitely good sign. Again, the keys to the victory. Compete on every play. Play with passion. Leave it on the field. And they definitely left it on the field. They can hang their hat. Give them a helmet sticker. Here we go. First down and 10 at the 42. Sergio Villarreal gets the ball, hands it off. And it's a block tackle party at the 41 on Adam Sancho. Sancho, the ball carrier. 
once again just hand off to them. I'm sure they're just tired right now, but they're not showing it. Well, they're, they're definitely showing it, but they're definitely not going to give up. Yeah, the great thing is not a, it's not a long bus ride home. This is a, I, I call it a border battle. They are the border to Alamo Heights, Edison is, so it's not a far bus ride home. So I'm sure they'll be able to get home, get some rest, and they won't be up all night. But right now it's second down, handoff to Ethan Escamilla, who bursts through and gains another eight yards on the play. Ethan Escamilla. Pushing it to another Golden Bears first down. Three minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. What are your thoughts, Taj? Well, my thoughts is that, that what my thoughts right there is that Alma Heights did leave it a little gap, left a gap for them to get that first down. But also Edison found it and they're able to, they're able to just get it and get it through. And that looked to be a run down and it's going to be, uh, so that was a pass. Almost picked off. And almost picked off, be incomplete. Right now, it will be second, second and ten, with three minutes left in the fourth quarter. Now, we're just gonna see what they're gonna do. Edison, it, right now, second and ten. They're probably gonna run it. We we'll see it in motion. Hands it off to Ethan Escamilla. And muscles his way through, and it's going to be stopped at, we'll see where it's stopped. It's going to be at the 50, oh, sorry, correction. It will be at the 42-yard uh, line on the meals side. And once again, it's just Edison just showing it, and they're just playing it all. Okay, hands it off to uh, hands it off to John Arosa. He goes Who do down with through, well, and, through. and it will be down That's, at yeah, the we'll 40 yard. It will be fourth and four. Short game now that means it's going to be a punt. Now. now either they're just going to punt and it could leave it again to Chip Johnson, or they could do an onside kick and try to get the ball back. We'll see what happens. And right now we have one four minute 46 left in the fourth quarter they're tired we're all a little bit tired right here they hands it hands it off muscles the way through and it will be down at we'll see at the uh, 39 yard line it is oh sorry at the 30 correction at the 37th yard line which will be another first for the Edison Bears and this is just a thing. They're good at rushing. They know what they're good at. They're just gonna be keep on doing what they're doing just to run that cl run uh, around that cl uh, clock out just to make sure that Alma doesn't get the ball. And they're in motion. It's a fake pass and it's it headed off. He muscles it down SCBO to the, the 35 yard line and it's sorry correction 34 yard line and it's just. They know it works. They're just going to keep on running out the clock. They're going to hang, hang their hats just like Laurent said. And they're just going to do and just just run out the clock, make sure Alma Heist does not get that ball back. We'll see. He's claps for the snap. He looks back. And he's going to throw it deep. And it is picked off by Alma Heist. He runs it back down. And it's down at the... Right now. And that was also... Number twenty, a uh, number twenty-eight, Walker Warnicky, who Walker picked that Warnicky. off, and that gives the Mills the the ball with twenty-five seconds left in the fourth quarter. You know what? It, I think this well, this game's been over since the first, but Edison is still going out there, is still going to do this, and they're still going to just try their try their best to make sure. And, and the, like I get said, it's definitely a game for other people to show their stuff. And uh, that would be about that would be Brady Pinna, who just kneels it down, and that leaves. And they're just gonna let the clock round out to zero, zero, and that means the Meals will get this win, 73 to six. We're gonna have we have Laura. 
Laron Fields going down onto the field to talk to Riddiman and also the player of the game. And we'll hand off to the player of the game, which is Trip Johnson and Ryan Stetson, who've definitely shown their game tonight. And even though, you know what, we gotta give props to Edison. They came out, they knew this game was gonna be tough, and they shown. So please, I have so much respect for Edison. And not to and not to just talk too much about Edison, we can also talk about Alamo Heights. And they're just they're just shown. The, uh, the, and we're going we're gonna to take a, also a quick, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And we'll bring it back. We'll be right back with Fields on the field. Send it away. Get ready to experience the thrill of Amite Sports like you've never seen it before. Age Sports Media is your ticket to the heart-pounding action. Catch all the live coverage of Alamo Heights sports events. And exclusive insights from dedicated athletes and coaches. Don't miss out. Tune the Age Sports Media and be part of the excitement. Alamo Heights Sports brought to you by AA Sports Media. Your passion, our coverage. That she wrote speech to the young, speech to the progress toward, say to them. Welcome back to Alamo Heights, uh, to the Alamo Heights um, uh, Meals. They just won 73 to 6. Now, we're going to, uh, you're watching Alamo Heights Meals on Alamo Heights, brought to you by Alamo Heights Sports Media. We're going to send it off to Mic'd Up with Mac. He said he's opposite. I'm like, right? It's telling you where to go. Is he the tight end? He's a tight end. If he's a tight end, then yeah, tight end's the right. That was a quick clip with Mic'd Up with Mac. Now, um, you can see him talking with Colin Ernst just there. Now we have, now we have Fields, uh, Laron Fields on the field right now looking for Coach Riddiman. And we had, and, and this was a senior night with Alma Heights. Now, this was a game that was definitely gonna be, you, you was gonna be a win, but Edison, as they're walking to their bus has definitely shown their they're shown their passion. They follow the keys of the game. They compete on every play. They played with passion and they left it all on the field. By also by making sure Alamo Heights doesn't have the ball near the in the end of the fourth quarter by just running it. And now we see I see Laron Fields just looking uh, shaking hands with everyone right now. And I just wanna just say one more time this is Alamo Heights Sports Media broadcast of the Meals Football brought to you by Alamo Heights Sports Media. This is a student-led program directed and coached by John Munoz, my teacher. And this is a student-led. We have we had our newest we had our newest student we had we have our newest student uh, Sydney Fry. More uh, ready. 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 And we have right now Laron Fields with Coach Ritterman. Now, La now Laron, you can take it away. Laron, what's up? Coach Ritterman, the standard. You keep reaching the standard, but I know you're a ball coach. So tell me what you thought of today's game. Well, I'm going <laughs> to agree with you. 
our standards pretty high and we, our kids did a great job. What a great team win, senior night. We got to celebrate those guys and what they've meant to our program. Uh, but the quality of play was at a real high level most of the night. But just like every week, there's a few things that we're going we found out tonight. We're going to work on it. We're going to be better next week. And I, I'm just excited because we have not even played our best game of the year and we haven't reached our full potential. And that's a great feeling. I was Engaged. Not looking forward to next week, but looking forward to next week of practice. Is there more changes, or are you like, hey, we're still figuring this thing out? We're, we're trying to get ready for that thing called the playoffs. Well, it's all about chemistry, team chemistry. When you find the right 11 guys clicking at a high level, man, it's, the game's a, a fun at that point. So we're still, we've made a few changes, personnel changes. We've changed a few guys' positions, uh, a few things with our scheme, and it really paid off for us tonight. So I'm excited about that. And if we can find a few more things off video going forward in the next week, that just makes our, takes our team to a whole nother level. And then you get ready for the playoffs. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate you taking time out. Thank we got to interview some of your players that were outstanding tonight. Thank you. Players. Yes, sir. Now we have up Mr. Ryan Stetson, who's a defensive player of the game. Ryan Stetson on the end zone. I for that the whole year, so I'm happy it finally came. This is sack or interception for a touchdown. Which one do you like the most? Mm, I'm thinking sack because the celebration. I got to get my celebration down. Pull one of these out. So you could have sack. You could have done that end zone, right? Low I key. Uh, what, take us through that play. What did you see on that play that caused you to get the interception? Well, so I had to jam the slot receiver in. I saw the guy pass block, and so I was like, oh, I got to get into the flats as fast as I can. Got to my guy, saw the ball coming in. Just made a play. Awesome. Well, congratulations. You are today's defensive player of the game. It's the first one we gave all year, so congratulations to you, sir. You. Ryan Stetson. We have a trip down memory lane because not once, not twice, but three times. My man that eats pancakes really had some touchdowns that were memorable today. You hit the jet pack, hit the end zone. What is it about you in the end zone, Trip? Tell us. Well, I got to thank my blockers because, you know, I had a wide open gap. Um, we executed it well, and I want to give them a great thanks. Awesome. So, you dual duty, receiver, kick returner. Which one do you enjoy more, or do you just like both? You know, I like both. Um, I really like uh, kick and punt returner because I get a lot more action, but I really love both. I enjoy it. Gotcha. Well, you are today's offensive player of the game. Four touchdowns, three on return, and one on offense. Congratulations, sir. Enjoy your weekend. Yes, See you at Mills for a it for this episode of Fields on the Field. We're going to kick it back to the booth of Taj. No, thank you. Uh, uh. Okay, now thank you, uh, uh, LaRon Fields. That was uh, that was Trip Johnson and uh, Ryan Stetson with the player of the game. Now, we can not, this is one one more time. This has could not have been done without the sports media crew and team. Now, we have, this was directed by John Munoz, as head coach. The commentators was Laron Fields and myself, Taj Young, filling in for Casey Vieta. And we cannot have give th so many thanks for the Alma Heights Sports Media team. And also, we must give a shout out to Sydney Fry our, for our first interview with Riddiman at halftime of the first sideline commentator. And also, we could not have done it without our contrib contributors. They brought, the, they built the program, they started it, and they also are helping it continue to grow. And once again, and, and by the way, we, and by the way, we, this is not just, the next game Alma Heights will be playing is gonna be Friday, October 28th at 2 p.m. against Lanier at Alamo Stadium. So make sure to tune into AH Sports Media to hear that. Now, what we're just going to say good night. I'm Taj Young. You've been watching Meals Football brought to you by Alma Heights Sports Media. Good night and have a great weekend.